Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the Ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. The following are words from Dolly Parton in the New York Times newspaper. And I quote... I try not to get political, but if I am, I might as well just run myself because I've got the hair for it, and they could always use more boobs in the race. Unquote. Drum roll. Brump, brump. Here comes Kate Smith and God Bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Quit your giggling wheels. Here we go. Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, don't forget some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. Right now, let's go to the phone line and our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. How art thou? I am very, very good. Thank you. Go ahead. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You always do a good job, Doug. Hey, real quick, Doug, and give me a short answer on this because i got a thousand things to get in here this morning. I just want to tell the audience that if they were listening to the 806 newscast from CBS, that was the worst, most biased opening story I've ever heard in my life. They were letting Hillary have her say about Trump regarding our military and everything, and most of the time when you have two candidates running for president, don't they give an other side of the story? No. It was all pro-Hillary, and it just shows the biased attitude that's going on in our news today. Exactly. Uh, Donald's not running against just Hillary. He's running against NBC, ABC, NBC, CBS. And Absolutely. And NBC, the New York Times, LA Times. <laughs> I mean, he's taking on everybody. Well, I tell you what, I appreciate your call for the pledge, and I think I'm going to upset you a little bit later on when I start talking about George Washington, so give us a call back. I, I heard that this morning. That is, <laughs> that, that's what happens when government takes over education and they teach the kids and they want to omit things they don't like. Well, it's not only government that takes over, it's the loony liberal mindset that they have the IQ of a hockey puck. Credit. I'm sorry. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs> All right. Listen, let's get to the weather right now. And the weather is brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. The number to call six seven eight six nine four five. Look for that blue door. Oh, my goodness. If you want to put new tile in your home, now is the time to talk about tile. They've got all in-stock tile. It's on sale, 50 cents per foot and uh, up to $1.29 per foot. So call Kyle and you will get an excellent deal on this. Carpet, flooring, kitchen, construction, home decor items, whatever you need to make your house a home at Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Right now here, I'm not even going to guess. It might be Gina, it might be Scotty. Here's the weather. 
All righty, here is a look at your weather forecast for this Thursday, September 8th. It's going to be nice, but it is going to be windy. Sunny skies is what we're expecting. High of 73 tonight, low of 43. Winds out of the west right around 18 miles an hour. Tomorrow, winds are going to be dying down. Sunny skies, high of 70 with an overnight low of 38. Saturday, looks like sunny skies, high close to 80. Overnight low of 46. But for Sunday, Winds are going to be picking up again out of the west right around 20 miles an hour, but it's going to be mostly sunny skies, high of 80 as well. That is your weather forecast for Seventh Ram. I appreciate it, Gina. Thank you much. And right now, again, the weather brought to you by our dear friends, Kyle and Whitney at Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for that blue door. Right now, let's sell some cattle. Merv May, come on in here. All right. Hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all the 31 moment. I am 31 going out. I am 32, 2 and a half, 3 and a half, 134, 4 and a half, 5 and a half, 5 and a half, 135, well, wait a minute. Are you done? There he goes. The chance over, and we got to tell you the big sale today at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. You better believe it, Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy, the sale that works for you. Oh, they got butcher cows coming in today. A good, good run of butcher cows. They got a semi load coming out of the bracket ranches down uh, south of Twin Falls, and they got a great trailer line run of cattle. I talked to Cade yesterday. He said they're going to start at 11 o'clock this morning. That sale time at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard and the number to call for consignment and sale information 678-9411. Burley Livestock Sale Yard sale today at 11 o'clock. Merv, sell those steers. All right. Hey, good set of steer calves there. Here to get all the 31 moment I have 31 going out. I have 32 2 and I have 3 going out. I have 134 4 and I have 5 and I have 135 and I have 135 and I have 7 35. Zeb Mel, get bottom again. Oh, my, my, my. There we go. Thank you, Merv. I appreciate it. And uh, let's see, we've got a lot of things going on today. Birthdays. Deanne gave me a list of birthdays that are going on. Don Craner, old buddy of mine. We go four-wheeling together. It's his birthday. And then Bruce Qualley is going to have a birthday on September 11th, Sunday, 9-1-1. And, of course, he's with Qualley Electronics. And then the old man... George Mass is celebrating a birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday to all of those guys, and congratulations. You betcha. Happy, happy birthday. All right, calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Also want to remind you about our good friends, dear friends, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Yep, open 730 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday. And I'll tell you what, they're waiting to see you. Stop in for all your heating needs, all your, we well, you don't know, cooling is uh, kind of maybe a nasty word right now because it's going to start cooling down and you better make sure your furnace and you've got furnace filters you better make sure that when your toes hit the cold tile floor you go Whoa, this house is cold well make sure you're nice warm and snugly ramsey heating and electric at 2600 overland avenue in burley really good folks all right, give me a call, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I'm going to do one more of our advertisements, and then I um, I want to talk to you about our our first president, George Washington. He's not welcome anymore. Hmm, stay tuned. Don't forget to Denny's Restaurant, oh my goodness sakes, and uh, they have got such a great plan going over there, free pancakes for kids, all through September from 4 to 10 p.m., my goodness, oh, those kids are going to love those buttermilk pancakes, <laughs> no, I'm drooling already, and you can put so many different things on them, whipped cream, berries, nuts, everything, oh my, it sounds good, it is, at America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley, and their other, other location at 291 Pole Line in Twin Falls. Denny's Restaurant serving you. And don't forget, it is the home of Zeb's Lunch Bunch. You stop in and see those good folks today. When I first heard this story, I thought, what? This is absolutely insane, but that tells you what the liberal left is like in this country today. George Washington, the father of our country, our first president, 
on all of our currency no longer is welcome as a name for high school a high school in san francisco yep got to take george's name down now folks i want to be really clear about this if there's anybody out in the audience right now that can honestly say that we today have the right to criticize what was done as accepted practices 250 to 300 years ago, call me. How can we sit here when these forefathers, long dead and buried, and their society was so much different from ours, what gives us the right today? to turn around in retrospect and criticize and demonize those people. I'm fed up with it. Now, the reason I said that is this. Back in the 1700s, slaves were kind of an accepted practice. That's the way it was. And plantations, working on plantations, that was the accepted norm. George Washington had a plantation. George Washington had slaves, if you will, working on the plantation. It was the common practice at that time. Now today, the liberal loons want to whitewash history and pick and choose who they deem worthy. Now, what's going on down in San Francisco? This is completely nuts. A Board of Education President, Matt Haney, San Francisco Unified School District, says we've got to take the name off the school. It can't be George Washington. No, no, we've got we to gotta have a different name. And what he's hoping that the school district will have on the names of any and all schools that have uh, names and noteworthy people from the past, and he wants them changed to current-day people of color, Women, and this is the one that blows my mind, LGBT figures. So you mean to tell me that on an elementary school that these perverts in San Francisco would put the name of other sexual perverts as a leading citizen enough to change the name of a school? Oh... We have trouble in River City, and it's a lot more than the trombone player getting sore lips. Let me tell you that. The uh, I just can't. And then he criticized this Haney. I would love to meet this guy. I would love to have him on my program. But liberals, when put in the sunlight, they run and hide for the shadows. Then he criticized Francis Scott Key. Francis Scott Key, who wrote our national anthem. He said, the song's slave-owning author, Francis Scott Key, has a school named after him, and it's got to be changed. We cannot have Francis Scott Key, who wrote the four verses of our national anthem. Oh, no, got to take the name down. Can't Can't have this. So what he wants now in San Francisco, you're not going to believe, he wants to change the name of George Washington High School, and then he wants to change it to Maya Angelou High School. An author and poet. Come on, folks. Give me a call and let me know. And then here is the kicker of what this guy said. We need to get rid of these people, and one Facebook comment came in in favor of this to the San Francisco school system, and they said, you know what, let's take down the name Francis Scott Key, and let's rename it Colin Kaepernick School. I don't know what to say. The idiots are winning. 
Calls are welcome, 436 <laughs> There's no end to this lunacy. Come on, give me a call. Hurry up. Please, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Barry Equipment and Rental, three locations, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Oh, I talked about their repair shop in Burley. It is good. Rod and Juan and the rest of the crew, they can fix anything from small engines to great big heavy equipment. I'm telling you. And then also check out all the equipment rentals and the retail equipment sales at Barry Equipment and Rental. And that's, of course, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away, I promise. Uh, Also, I want to say that I'm so glad I've got my schedule lined out now. For Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Oh, yeah. Started the other day. And going back again tomorrow morning. You better believe it. They can help you get back to being you. Number to call to make an appointment, 678-1191. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation at 1263 Bennett Avenue. Suite 2 in Burley with all the physical therapists, all their knowledge, all their help for you. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 678-1191. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. You know, that name-changing thing is just becoming absolutely insane. Uh, that, Like you mentioned, that was the norm for back in that time frame. Uh, if you look at history, we had children working in mines when they were six years old, working in brickyards. At, before they had child labor laws. Um, we had people who couldn't vote because that was the normal thing. And as far as the blacks saying, well, they were kicking off, well, you know what? It was your own people. Your own people sold you. You, you know, caller. be changing all these names, that's just insane. So who's going to say 20 years from now, oh, we can't have that name there because uh, they did this and this and this? That's right. So what are you going to do? Put snails and bluebirds and everything on everything? Oh, yeah. We've got to sit back and we've just got to watch the clouds float by. We've got to just have everything generic. Everything has to be a unisex society. Oh, we have to condemn the past. Why, we have to have book burnings to get rid of the names of Francis Scott Key and George Washington. What's the matter with you, caller? This is the new age. We've got to purge our past. Yeah, which is absolutely ridiculous. Instead of embracing our past and saying, okay, we don't like what they did. Let's remember what they did. So we don't do that. But we still need to honor what they did because it was what was going on at the time. You know, and that's the key right there that I brought up when I started this program. How dare we today, how dare any society today, look back and condemn what was done in their history or done in their society or done in their government in years past because it may have been the accepted mode of practice at that time. What makes us so puritanical that we can go back in history through our eyes and ears and condemn them? Exactly. Well, even in us today, if we were to go back and be judged on our youth for everything that we did then, oh my gosh, none of us would accomplish anything. Uh, let's not go back in my past. Uh, let's just leave that alone, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All of us have got something that we've done in our lives that we are not real proud of. I agree. So, you know, if we were all to be judged upon that, no one would go anywhere. Thank you, and I appreciate you calling. I get to work. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody about Sophie's Chatterbox. Oh, my. Every Monday, we give away a dozen cookies to Sophie's Chatterbox. Delicious food. Great restaurant. You're going to love it. 530 East Street in Rupert. And be listening Monday at 8. 8- 31. You may win some delicious cookies from their bakery at Sophie's Chatterbox in Rupert. Mm, they're good. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning again. You ask a question on how they can keep getting away with what they're doing. And my answer is because good people are just sitting on their thumbs and doing nothing. Amen. Just yeah. like, you know, in the past when people have told me, oh, you're on the radio all the time, but 
get off your debt duffers and get on the radio yourself. Amen. You know what? Some of the other names that this Haney wants to change the school's names to, listen to some of these names, and I know you're going to remember them from the news. Cesar Chavez, George Moscone, and avowed homosexual and LGBT Harvey Milk. Now, let me ask you something. If you're playing for Harvey Milk High School, pretty hard to have a football team that's really going to have the incentive to go out and knock somebody's block off, isn't it? <laughs> I, I just got a mental picture. Oh, don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it's, yeah, you come tiptoeing out. You know, with rainbow uniforms on. If, if, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but can you imagine, what would the mascot be at Harvey Milk High School? Don't go there, Doug. Never mind. I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> well, you asked the question. <laughs> Don't answer it. <laughs> No, I won't go there. Not on the air, anyway. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your call, Dougie. <laughs> no, but good people need to stand up. If it, you know, if they're tired of this going on and they're they're upset about it, by George, get off your duff. Do something about it. I couldn't agree. But you know, this is it, it's not a laughing matter. I mean, when you start erasing and deleting and condemning our past, our forefathers, because without them, without their blood, their sweat, their tears, and their lives, my gosh, we're showing no appreciation for this country, the United States of America. Well, we would not be the nation we were, or are, or could be, without what they've done. These... These people need to be locked up, and, and honestly, they need to be evaluated because I think their common sense and their minds are gone. But like you said, people need to stand up and really give them a negative look and a negative word to go, shut up, sit down in the corner, and don't bother us again. I mean, when you start talking about Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and all the patriots that risked their lives by forming this great country, and then now today, because of people like this Haney and the San Francisco school districts, they want to wipe them off the face of the earth as far as any remembrance? What what kind of loons are these people? They're, they're the coddled, they're the everybody wins, everybody gets a ribbon, everybody gets a trophy. That's their attitude. Well, uh... And there's a lot of sacrifices our forefathers went through that they're not talking about. Amen. A lot of them lost their families. Yep. Lost their farms had to live in hiding. Yeah, that's exactly right. Just watch the movie The Patriot. Yeah, just watch the movie The Patriot, and you'll see a great depiction of the suffering and the hurt and the killing that went on for the people that stood up for our country. Exactly. Exactly. And and these people that want to whitewash it, that's how you make the same mistake over and over again is by not learning from your mistakes. Absolutely. And I'll tell you something, young man. You better get down on your knees and thank goodness you didn't graduate from Harvey Milk High School. Talk to you later. <laughs> yes, sir. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is just, this fries me. I am so upset about this this morning. Everybody ought to be really, really teed off. Anyway, don't forget Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with the lovely Dr. Christine Pickup, the only locally owned and independent hearing health care practice in Southern Idaho. She knows. I mean, this woman has... Wow, what a knowledge about hearing and sound and everything else. Please take my advice and get a hearing screening. They're right across from the Minidoka County Hospital Emergency Room. And the number to call for an appointment today, 312-0957. 312-0957, call today. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, waiting right this moment to serve you. 
Um, we have got a friend of mine on the phone. I'm going to get right to him in just a moment, but I first of all want to tell everybody about Lennox and Ramsey Heating and Electric. Oh, boy. Right now, Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems, whether they're gas furnaces, air conditioners, a heat pump, whatever. They want to keep you comfy. Call 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox can save you money. Charlie Howell, Jerome County Commissioner, good morning. How are you? I'm getting him on right now, sir. You'd better. I'll try it again. Let me know when he's on the air, okay? Yes, sir. I'm just calling him on his landline. Okay, well, hurry, hurry, hurry. And uh, while I'm waiting for that call, I'm going to tell everybody, too, that uh, we want to thank Minicasha Sales. And, of course, our dear friend Zach and the whole crew over there at Minicasha Sales bringing you Dr. History on Tuesdays at 10.06. Boy, that segment heard now in over 100 countries. 100 countries have tapped in and listened to the program. Minicasha Sales, 1321 East Main Street in Brooklyn with all your lumber, all your shingles, all your windows. My goodness, these are good folks. And they have the Tartar Farm and Ranch gates and panels, too. So check it out. Zach and the whole crew at Minicasha Sales, 878-2091. Charlie Howell, how are you this morning? Uh, give me one second. What is the problem, Wheels? The phone line was busy, so i got to call him back and reestablish the call, but he is on the phone for you now. All right. Charlie, come on. You're late. What's going on over there? Well, I can just barely hear you again, Zip. I guess I'm going to have to get a new phone. I uh, would surmise that uh, with the money you're making, you could afford a bunch of new phones. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> well, tell us what's going on this weekend. Over here, you know, everybody's looking for a fourth or fifth cut in the hay, and... Uh, Starting sugar beets pretty soon, I think, and chopping corn. So, you know, same old stuff that's going on. All right. Now, you've been a Jerome County Commissioner for a long time, and you're going to tell us about what's happening with the Jerome County Historical Society with their 33rd Live History Days. What's happening over there? Well, that's correct. And, and uh, being county commissioner doesn't have anything to do with the Historical Society. I, I'm just a volunteer there. And, uh, my company uh, donates electrical work out there at the Idaho Farm and Ranch Museum out by Flying J. And this Saturday, they're having the Live History Day. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 a.m. Doors open at uh, 10 o'clock. We'll have a flag raising and a prayer. And then some of the highlights during the day are they're going to have an antique tractor parade at noon and then the tractor pull after that. Uh, they'll have a, a homemade pie auction at 1 a.m. 1 p.m., almost at 1 a.m., and it runs till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And some of the other activities that they'll do is they're going to be churning butter and making bread, and some people will be making clothes, just like the old days when they used to do that. Not that some people still don't do that. But the highlight this year is uh, the uh, Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame has been moved from Gooding over to the I Farm in Jerome. It's, uh, they just ran out of room over in Gooding, and so this opportunity came up. So here's another chance to go see, and in addition to the I farm out there at Flying J, and it's a ro- Idol Rodeo Hall of Fame. Shows uh, local rodeo and participants from Idaho. In fact, I believe Deanne is in there on the Hall of Fame. She was inducted last year. Karen James, or at that time it was Karen Lavins, Miss Rodeo America, was is in the Hall of Fame, and Kelly Wardell, who's now the CSI Rodeo Coach. So those are some of the activities going over there at the I farm. Well, and uh, all of this is going to take place at the I-Farm. By the way, where did that name come from, and what does it mean, I-Farm? Well, it's an acronym for Idaho Farm and Ranch Museum, so they just shortened it up to the I-Farm, Idaho Farm. Okay. And is there any cost to get in? Pardon? I say, is there any cost to get in? Oh, yep, good point. So it costs $5 to get in, children under 12 are free. Okay, and uh, I understand on Sunday they're going to have an old-fashioned church service at 11 o'clock, too, and there's no admittance fee on Sunday. Is that correct? That's correct, yep. Okay. Yep. Just your, uh, giving up your sins will be the <laughs> admission price of admission. How's that? Well, you'd better get there early, Howell. <laughs> well, that's true. I can't, I can't deny I've had my share and, and uh, keep trying to be better. 
Well, you know, it's a lot of fun, and these people have put a lot of time and effort into the iFarm with live history days, and of course our display with the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame, of which I was very honored in 2012 to become a member, and uh, other names that you mentioned. It's a lot of history and a lot of fun. Charlie, I know you're going to be there, and uh, God bless you, man, for coming on the program. You bet. I appreciate the five-minute blur for the iFarm. It's uh, right off of 93 and Interstate 84. You turn in the Fly and J entrance, and before you go to the Gas Islands, you turn around to go to the motel, and then you just follow that uh, frontage road around past the motel up to the iFarm. Can't miss it, as they all say. Okay, and you are personally going to be right out in front churning butter and waving a red, white, and blue flag. Is that correct? You know, uh, probably not this weekend, but I have churned butter in my lifetime, trust me. Both the paddle wheel kind in the, in the gallon uh, jar and also the up and down stroke kind with, in the bucket. So, yeah, I've, I've had my share of churning butter when I was younger. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a chance for you and old codger to relive the past, and we'll look forward to it. Thanks, Charlie. Okay, everybody come out and support them. It'll be great. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thank you Live History Days at the iFarm over in Jerome, and it's uh, going to be right there at the crossroads of U.S. Highway 93 and Interstate 84, and a lot, a lot of fun. So you folks try to make it over there. Calls are welcome, 436 227 We talked a little bit about George Washington and name changes. I'd like to get your opinion. You know, it doesn't stop there, though. There is a cleansing and a purging of any and all names. Even right here in the state of Idaho, there's been already a lot of purging of names. Oh, we can't have that on the map anymore. We've got to take that off. We've got to change it. You've heard this in the past, and it's going to keep on getting worse. Anything, any name item, or any person that the liberal left does not like, look out you better have a big eraser. It's happening. Your thoughts on that. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about that military forum last night. We'll get into that in just a moment. Don't forget the Ark Animal Hospital. Calls are welcome, too, by the way, 436-2244. Ark Animal Hospital at 750 21st Street in Hayburn. They have the warm hearts for cold noses. They've been voted Medicash's best veterinary hospital for multiple years, and they welcome Dr. Liz Schrepfer as an associate veterinarian. Congratulations and welcome. And through the month of September, they're having a fundraiser for the Cache County Canine Units. And they'll be collecting donations for the dogs and the handlers and go on in there and purchase a paw print for a dollar. And the paw prints are going to be hung in the lobby for the whole month of September. And all the funds go to the dogs, equipment, and food at Ark Animal Hospital, 750 21st Street in Hayburn. Warm hearts for cold noses. All right, your calls are welcome. Do you have a cold nose? Give me a call. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I watch parts, bits and pieces, and parcels of the military forum last night, hosted by NBC's Matt Lauer. And... He's getting toasted this morning. Matt Lauer of NBC News is absolutely being ripped over the coals because basically the general thought was he was too mean to Hillary. Yeah, honestly, there have been a landslide of people that have criticized Matt Lauer because he was direct in his questioning and pursued the answers to the questions. Oh, my. They said he was too rude. They said he was too sexist. I told you months and months ago on this program that I pity the debates coming up for Trump and anybody that would speak out against Hillary or when an interviewer asks her a question being more defining in her answers and they pursue that defining of her answers, they're going to be called sexist and rude. It's happening. They're playing the gender card. And as far as I'm concerned, ladies, call me on this. I want to hear from the ladies this morning right now. If you're running for the presidency of the United States of America and you ask a question and 
in this case, Hillary Clinton skirts around the question, wait a minute, Hillary, I didn't ask you that. I asked you this. Let's stay on track. And right away, the liberal loons jump in and say, why, that's terrible. He was rude. Or he was being sexist. He wouldn't have done that to a man. Really? Really? You cannot treat Hillary any different in questioning or being in an interview than anyone else. The gender, the lady atmosphere, not, that goes out the window when you're trying to get answers about Benghazi, trying to get answers about what to do in the Middle East, trying to get answers about what to do with energy, trying to get answers about what to do to get our economy back on track instead of going over a cliff. And I have never liked Matt Lauer. But in this case, i got to stand up for him and say that uh, absolutely lead on. And I've seen some of the emails, thanks to Deanne. We've got some of the emails and some of the Facebook quotes and everything. And they're coming out of the woodwork to really denigrate Matt Lauer. Why? He didn't treat her with respect. Why? He asked questions that, why, they embarrassed her. What in the world is going on? You know, the old adage, if you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. And I'd like the ladies in the audience, I can think of many right now, that are very, very capable of calling and commenting on this, Give me a call. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. But boy, they're coming after old Matt. Boy, look out. Trouble in River City. Calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, you know what's going on this Saturday also? The Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch 28th Annual Production Sale. I've been up there for quite a few of them, and I'll tell you what they are tops they've got some of the best horses in the world where the leo legacy continues horses with personality confirmation color and athleticism you want to spend the money to get in the horse business you want something that's going to do the job for you these horses can and will be up there saturday september 10th preview at 10 sale at 11 zollinger quarter horse ranch great big production sale don't you miss it all right, give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Oh, remember, I'm sure you have, uh, you've probably seen, uh, hold on, caller, I'll be right there. You've probably seen Jill Stein. She is the green, this is important to remember, you know, the Enviro wackos. She is the green party candidate for President Jill Stein. Well, she's got one small problem. There's a warrant out for her arrest for destruction and vandalism of private property. <laughs> she, she went on to this construction site and spray-painted a bunch of things and did a bunch of other stuff, and there's a warrant out for her arrest. Boy, our presidential race has really got some high-class people, doesn't it? Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Oh, my goodness. What could we find at George Washington? You know, now, it, talk to me about that a little bit. You've raised your children, and you've uh, absolutely been a great American, very proud of the United States of America. Isn't this the bottom of the bottom when people start denigrating George Washington? Well, I am afraid that some of our children don't know enough about George Washington and I really enjoyed that series that they had on television. Was it O'Reilly's yeah. about George Washington mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this year? It was amazing. And I'm not putting a plug in for it, but anybody who can get their hands on it ought to watch it. George Washington was a man. Let's remember, he wasn't God. And he was in on an experiment that had never been done anywhere in the world. Well, I, I think... Go ahead, Chris. Via, via God. Well, let me just say this, that what right, answer this part of the equation, what right does this guy and these other people from the San Francisco United School District have to basically, like I said earlier, pick up a big eraser and just totally wipe out 
destroy, put out of sight, put out of memory, the forefathers of the greatest country that has ever been on the face of the earth. This makes no sense to me. Well, I would like to have a sit down with some of those and see how many of them even know who George Washington was, other than what bad things they think they've been told in the public school system. Yeah, and then to come out and say, well, we should change some of the schools to Cesar Chavez High School. Boy, there's a lot of holes in that screen door, too. George Moscone. And last but not least, Harvey Milk? Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, there's something in the water in San Francisco. Maybe they better check their water. Uh, Chris, let me tell you. I know, uh, Deb, I am so sad for this country because the minute we forget our history, we are doomed to repeat it. And I believe that's one of your quotations. You know, it is. And uh, I, I will say this, that I've read a lot of books about the Revolutionary War. I've done a lot of study on the Revolutionary War, and on my bookcase behind me, I've probably got, uh, let me take a look here, 24679, I've got about 12, 12 books on the Revolutionary War. And in a quick summation, the people at that time, they met behind closed doors, they met in the woods, they met anywhere in secret to plan and plot to try to build a nation called the United States. And for all their sacrifice, and there was a lot of sacrifice, and all the death and all the blood, sweat, and tears, and then the idiots today like this guy from the San Francisco United School District want to purge and destroy it, what kind of a society are we living? Uh, unfortunately, a society that only thinks of today, and um, sadly, our, our school systems are not helping kids to realize why why they have such a, a blessing to live in this country, and you don't go back and rewrite the history. Absolutely. Yeah, oh no, you've got my you've got my anger up. <laughs> well, just keep keep fighting, Chris. Keep fighting. It's always good to hear from you. God bless you and thank you. Mm-hmm. All righty, I love that lady. She's really, really well informed. But you, no, seriously, come on. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll be really good. I'll be well-behaved. I will not crawl through the phone wire and try to strangle you with it. If you honestly think we should purge. George Washington's name and Thomas Jefferson's name or maybe Abraham Lincoln's name. Oh no, we got to put them out of sight, out of mind. We can't have anything on them. And replace the school names with Cesar Chavez or Harvey Milk. Caller, caller, I'm going to ask your patience, please. I'm going to take 60 seconds. I've got to get the weather in here. I'm running late. I'll be right with you. Stand by. Don't go away. I want to remind everybody the weather brought to you this hour by Riverview Urgent Care, Urgent Care of Jerome, and Urgent Care in Twin Falls. And it's true. Minor emergencies, major care. No appointments necessary. Walk in. If you got an owie, they'll take care of it. Go to their website, urgentcareofidaho.com. They'll tell you all about it. It's quicker, less expensive. Remember, three locations, Jerome, Burley, and Twin Falls. Here now, Gina with the weather. All righty, here is a look at your weather forecast for this Thursday, September 8th. It's going to be nice, but it is going to be windy. Sunny skies is what we're expecting. High of 73 tonight, low of 43. Winds out of the west right around 18 miles an hour. Tomorrow, winds are going to be dying down. Sunny skies, high of 70 with an overnight low of 38. Saturday, looks like sunny skies, high close to 80. Overnight low of 46, but for Sunday, Winds are going to be picking up again out of the west right around 20 miles an hour, but it's going to be mostly sunny skies, high of 80 as well. 
That is your weather forecast for Zebedee. Uh, she does a great job. Thank you. The Urgent Cares, Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Urgent Care of Jerome, and Urgent Care in Twin Falls. Yes, sir. Minor emergencies, major care. They can really help you. All right. Good morning, caller. Thank you for your patience. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Bell, and thank you for your time. And this is Shelley Holy calling. I'd like to make a few comments. Um, I would say concerning those people that are trying to change, take the names off, um, well, I'll tell you what, uh, the Bible says wisdom builds her house, house. And it also says one sinner destroys much good. And there's definitely several sinners, um, trying to exercise their wicked schemes and um, if they want to wipe off these people's names well God will not hesitate to wipe off their names off the Lamb's Book of Life if they had ever any chance to be on there to begin with they've got a lot of repenting to do and plus the fact God is no respecter of persons and in heaven there's neither male nor female black or white or whatever, we're going to all be responsible to stand before God for our actions. I agree I totally. What, I am sick and tired of what's going on in this nation, and it, this need, nation needs to repent. And in no uncertain terms, God is not, his hands are stretched out still. He's longing for people to run to him and repent. He's not willing for anyone to perish, but I'll tell you what, his hand is stretched out still in God's judgment on us on this nation if we do not repent of abortion and these same-sex marriages. I agree with you, and I can't turn this into a sermon right now because I don't have that time, but I appreciate your comments. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Uh, right now, let's also remind you about our major sponsor, and then we'll take some more calls at 436 227 Your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with a great big, huge fall tire set. And, of course, all the big-name tires, all the top tread designs, everything on sale for you. The Ultra Z900, mm-hmm, all-season tread, 65 to 80,000-mile warranty. What? Yes, that's true. And uh, those and many other tires available at sale prices at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. With, of course, the best in brake service. From professionally trained technicians, they really know brakes. Front end alignments. Boy, you notice you're kind of pulling towards the barrel pit well don't wear your tires off get it fixed and shocks and struts and batteries boy the mornings are going to get a little cooler you're going to go out there and turn the key and it's going to go not this time charlie well anyway you better check your battery they can do all of that and help you with lane and rupert dave on blue lakes and twin mike and buell mike and jerome the twist family and paul daniel on pole line and twin falls and my buddy randy on overland in burley your magic valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Going back to what happened during the 806 News this morning with CBS, and there is a very good, clear-cut case of bias. CBS News, and I don't care if they're our affiliate network or not, I'm going to call it like it is, CBS News was very biased the way they handled that opening story this morning. Oh, Hillary said this, Hillary said that. Now, what they should have done, if they're really a journalistic news cast, they should have said, well, then Trump said this about that same situation, but they didn't. And I, for one, I'm going to condemn CBS. I'm going to condemn ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox, anybody. If they're not going to be journalists and present the news in a fair, unbalanced, and balanced, I should say, not unbalanced. Well, some of these guys are unbalanced. But they need to be fair about this thing. And that newscast at 8.06 this morning by CBS was pathetic. It was extremely biased in their opening story. Uh, The NFL starts tonight. And it's got a rematch of a big game last year. I don't think it's going to be that big of a game tonight. I think the Panthers are going to stomp all over the Denver Broncos. I know. 
We've got a lot of Denver Broncos here in the audience, and they're fans. But I don't think the Broncos have nearly the team people think they have. I'll probably eat my words Monday, but we'll see the Panthers I'll pick in a at least two-touchdown uh, victory tonight. NFL season starts. Tiger Woods. This was kind of interesting. You know, Tiger Woods has faded from golf obscurity. He's going to make a comeback, he said, next month. He's uh, been working on his back. He's had a lot of problems health-wise. And he's going to try to enter the PGA, uh, I think it's a tournament in um, California. He's going to try to start back, so we'll see what happens. And then, shock of all shock, Tim Tebow. Yeah, Tim Tebow. Football's Tim Tebow. He said, well, if I can't make it in football i'll try baseball he used to play a little bit of football baseball i should say at the university of florida well he was signed to a lower class farm team of the new york mets yesterday so we'll see what happens with tim tebow we're going to take a little break and get ready to send this back over to our main studios with old wheels at the board. And then next hour, we've got the chamber report. We've got the football trivia contest sponsored by Denny's. You might win a great Grand Slam breakfast from Denny's, so be listening. And then Dog Nation. And then at 9.30 this morning, in place of Rita, we've got Senator Kelly Anthon coming on. A very interesting discussion on some very important topics this morning at 9 30 all of that coming up this next hour so stay right here with us at the ranch for a thursday a beautiful day outside enjoy the day we'll see you back here in about six minutes oh i've been busy during the break I've been figuring out mascot names for Harvey Milk High School. I got some I'll share with you in just a minute. Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. From the canyons of the Snake River and all across southern Idaho. Western Way Services, always at your disposal. And don't forget, they've got dumpsters in various sizes. <laughs> I'll take the extra large, please. <laughs> I'm cleaning out my office. They've got them in all different sizes. They are always at your disposal. Please get a hold of them. Construction, industrial, and events. They've got all the porta potties. My goodness, they can, and they will help you. Locally owned and operated, 734-6969. Always at your disposal. Western Waste Services, the best. By the way, too, we want to remind everybody, Ramsey Heating and Electric is offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. That's right. Whether it's gas furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, whatever, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. Call them at 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox, they can save you money. And before we go to Kyla, waiting patiently, I hope patiently, over at the Chamber of Commerce, we're going to talk a little bit about Joel Heward and his staff and family serving you at Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. You know, people just kind of go, oh, I don't want to talk about death and dying, but you know we have to be prepared. And they have planning guides for you to come in, study, and help ease everyone's stress. All you have to do is call them and stop in. 436-5636. Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. And they always treat you with the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. Handsome Mortuary in Rupert, 436-5636. Well, there she is, standing in the sunlight of her office, the great big bay window overlooking the Snake River. Hello, Kyla at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce. Hi, good morning, Zeb. How are you this morning? Peachy, peachy. How are you? (laughs) 
I'm good. I'm good. I'll tell you, I'm not thinking about changing any names at this point in my life after listening to you this morning. So. <laughs> oh, that a girl, that a girl. What's going on over there this morning? Well, you know what? We are gearing up for the big chamber leadership class that is going to be ramping up and starting on September 15th. And this is a big change for us. Historically, we've always run the chamber leadership class January through August. We made the decision to change it. It's going to start in September and then end in April. We just feel it will mirror the school district's calendar a lot better. And you know how it gets in the summer. Everybody gets so busy. And so this way, we think it's going to be a great opportunity. We have um, over 10 people, I think, signed up for the class right now. And it's going to be very exciting. And I want to let everyone know, chamber leadership, a lot of people say, hey, I've lived here forever. I totally know what's going on yada, 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 but this is a wonderful opportunity to get a foot in the door in some of the major companies in both Minidoka and Kaja County that you're not going to get into otherwise to take a look at how they do business and hear what's making them successful. And it's just a great opportunity to look at your employees, look at yourself as a business owner and say, hey, I want to develop my leadership abilities so that we can become a better community. And you know we need strong leaders out there in our community, especially with all the changes that are going to be happening down the pipe in years to come. Very well stated. Well, it sounds like you're really on top of things over there at the Chamber office. What else is going on on a beautiful fall September day? Oh, gosh, we have so many things going on. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'm really excited to see the sunshine. As you know, I don't know if I'm excited about winter coming so soon, but... There is a very important major event happening on Saturday. We want to let everybody know about it. It's at the Rupert Square. It's the POW MIA um, event as well as car show. And so they're going to have music in the Rupert Square starting on Saturday at 10 a.m. That will be going on all the way to about 1.30. The POW MIA program is an extremely moving and just honorable program. We encourage everyone to get out to it. It's free from 2 to 3 o'clock at the square. And then this car show is really going on all day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And there'll be hot rods, the rad rods, uh, low riders, the dragsters, you name it. So just a neat opportunity for you to get out with the family, take a friend, honor our POWs and MIAs, and then enjoy a really awesome car show. Ah. Absolutely. Hey, Kyla, we got a caller real quick. I think it's regarding the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, so we'll see. Stay on the line. Call her real fast. I'm almost out of time. Go. Okay, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the Businessman Farmer of the Year Award and everything and the deadline on it and what the qualifications are and just let us know about it. So if you have somebody you want to submit, you could do it. All right. Well, we'll have her repeat that. Go ahead. I would do is go ahead and call me, Kyla, K-Y-L-A, at our office, 679-4793, and I'd be happy to talk about all of that with you. So uh, thank you for the call. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, I tell you what, you're doing a lot over there. Have you kind of settled in and become uh, old hat over there in your office? You're comfortable now? <laughs> I don't know if you ever get to be old hat, Zev. i got to be around here for a long time. I'm still the new kid on the block, so... It's nice to be back. You know, I lived in the Magic Valley, southern Idaho area about 12 years ago, and it's amazing to me to see all the changes. It's fun to see, uh, you know, some things look definitely familiar, but uh, I'm still in that moving process. Someone told me you don't get settled till you live someplace for about five years. So I'm very excited to be here and just honored to be a part of the community and, and do our best for our community and our businesses here in Chaja and Minidoka County. All right. Well, Kyle, I want to wish you a very, very good weekend. Enjoy the sunshine. Enjoy the great temperatures. We will talk to you next Thursday on the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce Report. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ed. Have a great day. You too. Thank you much. Very, very nice lady. And for any questions about our economy and what's going on with economic growth and businesses, call the Chamber office. Kyla and the crew, they can help you. They will. Oh! Oh my goodness, let's see. We've got to pay some bills, and I want to say thank you again for Cheney Flooring and Home Design sponsoring our weather every morning when we start the program at 8.06. And they've got all your carpet and flooring, kitchen construction, home decor items, whatever you need to make your house a home. Look for the blue door at 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Cheney Flooring and Home Design. Really nice people.
And uh, talking about uh, things that are good to go to and be around and people you're going to like, you're going to love the Great Big Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch Sale coming up this Saturday, the 28th production sale, 28th annual production sale. This Saturday, preview at 10, sale at 11, up at the ranch. That's where they've had it every year at 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley, where the Leo legacy continues. They have had and do have some of the best Colts and Phillies anywhere, personality, confirmation, color, athleticism, all of this at the big sale at Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch production sale this Saturday. Don't you miss it. Oh, my goodness sakes. Um, i got to be honest with you right now. It is time for our Magic Valley football forecast of what's going to happen this weekend and also the Denny's trivia question of the week. You can win a free original Grand Slam breakfast from Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland and Burley if you answer this football trivia question. And it is an easy one this week. It really is. Last week I made it a little tough, and some people said, well, I didn't know that. I said, okay, this week I'll make it a little bit more easy for everybody. There is one team in the National Football League that does not have a decal or insignia on their helmet. Name that team. First person to call 436-2244-1866-927-4587 with the right answer will receive, if you haven't won before, a original Grand Slam breakfast. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hey, it's the Cleveland Browns. Who is this? Tony Luna. Tony Luna, you like breakfast? Yeah, I do. You like going to Denny's? I do. Well, then get in there because you're the winner, buddy. Thanks so much. All right, thanks. Have a good day. Tony Luna. And the answer is the Cleveland Browns. And then there's another team that only has an insignia logo on one side, and that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Some of the big games coming up this weekend. Let's take a look at the list. We've got Burley going against Minico. Ooh, baby. <laughs> There's a good one. And we've got Canyon Ridge going against Shelley. Jerome's going to play Idaho Falls. And uh, Twin Falls is going to play Wood River. Filer Wildcats are going to play American Falls. That should be a good game. Gooding's going to take on Fruitland. Kimberly is going to take on Declo. Now that is going to be a good game. And then we're looking at Wendell playing Battle Mountain, Nevada. And uh, let's see, Glens Ferry is going to take on Raft River. Uh, I think Raft River is going to stomp Glens Ferry. And uh, Hagerman is going to take on Chalice. Murtaugh Hansen is going to take on Grace. And Oakley is going to play Rockland. And let's see. Let's go down the list here. In the eight man, we've got Lighthouse Christian taking on Water Springs. Now, I got to be honest with you. I don't know where Water Springs is. Hmm. Dietrich's going to take on Butte County, and Castle Ford takes on Rimrock. Those are some of the games going on this weekend. And our congratulations to Tony Luna winning the. Great big Grand Slam breakfast from Denny's. Congratulations. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I, I got to admit, my sick warped mind was working during the news, and I thought, you know, we were talking about name changes last hour. And uh, there was this uh, nimble head down there in San Francisco that wants to take away the name George Washington off the high school. And he wants to replace it with the name of Harvey Milk High School. And I, I said to Doug when he called, I said, well, I wonder what they would have for a mascot. So I got to thinking about some of the mascots you could have that would go along with Harvey Milk. And I came up with Harvey Milk Buckets. Harvey Milk shakes, but my favorite hit me all of a sudden out of the blue, and it's after a candy. They can be called the Harvey Milk Duds. Okay, I quit. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm Harvey Milk Toast. Yeah, there, there you go. There's another one. I just heard you talk about the Zollister Quarter Horse. 
sale. Yes. I have to call in and tell you, I had horses as a kid a couple of years ago, probably about five years ago. My cousin talked me into going to that. I've never bought a horse there, but you will never have a better time. If you love to look at a beautiful piece of horse flesh and you want to support that Oakley FFA and all the kids that do the lunch up there and just have a good day, you got to go. I'm not kidding you. I go every year, uh, and it's just wonderful. Well, so I thought I'd pass that on. Where are you calling from? I'm actually live right here in Burley, and uh, my cousin, she comes down to Pocatello every year, and we she bought two horses up there, and I took my mare up and had a bred to one of their stud horses, and I'll tell you what, you just can't have a better time if you like horses. You and I'll tell you what, it's sad that we don't have Wade anymore, but Jerry... Man, what a good time had by all. I agree with you, and I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm going to have you get on the air with me next year because you do such a great uh, personalized advertisement. You're my, I just hired you. Oh, good. <laughs> I just have to call in every year because I tell you, I watch those stud horses and their cats and go through that catalog, and I'll tell you what, I tell my friends in California, and they get on the online sales, and even though sometimes we don't buy a horse, I'll tell you what, it is just like watching the most beautiful movie of, like, you know, Secretariat or that, uh, you know, any horse movie that you want to watch. If you love horses, it is just a great show. I appreciate that. And you know what? i got to ask you this real quick, and i got to have a short answer because I've got to get another commercial break in. But my favorite, I want to ask you, my favorite horse movie of all time was Seabiscuit. Did you like that one? Oh, absolutely loved it. I was actually stumbling there for a minute when I said Secretary. I couldn't remember Seabiscuit, but yep. Go for it. Uh, you know, there's that part in the movie. There's that part in the movie. Thanks for taking my call. You have a great day. Sir. Oh, God bless you. Thank you so much. Nice lady right there. And thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch Sale coming up this Saturday. Boy, they got a, ended up getting, what, a five-minute commercial. Jerry, I'm sending you the bill. Anyway, don't forget, too, that Lee's Furniture is having a great big sale. It's on right now. It's called America's Best Sale. Nobody down no interest until 2017 on approved credit oh my all the mattresses all the bedroom sets all the sofas they've got it all lift lift recliners i almost said life recliners but they're great for your life because they'll lift you up and they've got all the dining room sets entertainment stands what are you waiting for get into 459 overland in burley today for my friends lee's furniture floors and more they're serving you with America's best sale. Oh my goodness sakes, and before we get uh, Colonel Ken on here, we've got to talk a little bit about Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Oh my yes. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 to 6. Now here's the reason I want you to stop in and see them is because they're having closeout prices on the 2016 four-wheelers and side-by-sides. <laughs> Save money, have fun. And the new 2017 models are coming on in. They have got the fantastic accessory department. Everything you may need right there and service department they can fix anything they will oh my goodness this is where the fun is sold let's ride 270 highway 24 over by rupert you stop in and see them today where did all these doggone dogs come from anyway they're all over the place my goodness sakes, the man in charge is old Kennel Ken. I called him Colonel a minute ago. I raised him in rank. Hello, Ken Mort, Minidoka Animal Control. How are you? I'm doing great, Zeb. How about yourself? Oh, I'm just peachy. What's going on? Well, I uh, don't have anybody to feature today because uh, the person I have uh, was going to feature is actually we are getting ready to load up, and I'm doing a transport to Idaho Falls this morning to meet uh, Susie with Beaver and Humane Society and Rescue up there in Dillon, Montana. And uh, she is taking everything that we have available because she's actually found homes for them. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what kind of dogs? She's been, 
uh, such a wonderful outlet for us, being able to help us find homes for all of our uh, furry friends that uh, we have that are unwanted in our area. And uh, she does a great job of what she does up there. Well, now, what kind of dogs are you taking up there? I mean, have you got a different variety, or what's happening here? Oh, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got like, some lab crosses, uh, some uh, Chesapeake Annette uh, cross. Uh, we've got like a little Shih Tzu looking uh, type cross that was actually abandoned in an empty house. Oh my! Uh, I mean, we've got just all sorts of different varieties of uh, small to to large dogs that are that are she's taken from us. You avoided the issue one morning on the program when I asked you how they got the name Shih Tzu, but uh, I'll let it pass. Well, it was a, it's actually a uh, Chinese uh, royalty name. Oh, okay. And that the uh, Shih Tzu actually and that, uh, was considered a royal dog and stuff and that in uh, China. Really? Yes. Well, you know your canines. Well, what else has happened over there at Minidoka Animal Control? Well, I want to remind everybody with schools and that has started. I'm actually getting a lot of phone calls from people that uh, are, and schools uh, that have people have had dogs following kids to schools in the mornings and. Uh, and everything, so just please make sure you guys are keeping your animals contained so that they're not uh, following the kids to school. As a matter of fact, yesterday we had in uh, Paul, we had a little Pomeranian that had gotten loose and was chasing after the kids, nipping at the kids, trying to hurt them to school. Oh, boy. You know, one... Uh, but, uh, we got that uh, that nipped in the, in the hindsight and uh, taken care of, so hopefully we don't have that issue anymore, but uh, also we've got harvest going on. I mean, they're digging spuds like crazy right now, and Getting ready for the early beats. Uh, there's going to be a lot of trucks, uh, farm equipment running on the roads. Uh, so definitely make sure you're keeping your animals contained so that they're not getting uh, hit and killed or hit and seriously injured. Okay, a couple of things I want to mention to you, Ken. Uh, Deanne and I have noticed this last week driving around the area. Uh, we've seen what had to be at least two or three drop-off dogs where people get out in the rural area and drop them off. The other part of what I wanted to ask you about is also that a lot of guys are going maybe to where they're digging spuds or they're digging beets and they got their dog in the pickup. It's a strange surrounding. They open the door and out he goes. So you got kind of two problems right there with dogs that maybe can't find their way back home. Exactly. Uh, matter of fact, we uh, I got called uh, yesterday. Some people come up here for the Labor Day weekend to visit some family out by uh, Minidoka City. Uh, the dog in a strange area, it took off on them, and they have not been able to find it. Uh, luckily, I've got all their contact information and, and uh, information on the dog, and we're keeping our eyes out for it. But, I mean, it's... It's a it's a real issue, and especially for a dog that's not familiar with that area, they'll they'll get lost quickly, and then once they get lost and scared, it it can be a, a heck of a time trying to even get them caught because of them being so scared. Uh, one other thing, Ken, real quick, while we're on the air, we got about two minutes left. Uh, would you tell everybody what are the Idaho law requirements as far as their shots, wearing a collar, that type of thing? You know, uh, a lot of it depends on on the area that you live in. Uh, for instance, Minidoka County, uh, they've got it set up to where all dogs over the age of six months are required to have a collar and license. Uh, the license that is required isn't what, that little dog tag you go buy in Walmart. It's their little machine or it's got their name and phone number on it. It's actually a license that you either purchase through uh, one of the city offices or through uh, the animal control facility. Uh, and that, but each each area is different in how they uh, do their licensing. For instance, we have a one cent fee here in Minidoka County of ten dollars a year, and it's for the calendar year. So, uh, that, and it doesn't matter whether they're spayed or neutered uh, or not. But there are areas in the state of Idaho that basically say it's this much if your dog's spayed or neutered. It's this much more if they're not spay or neutered. So, okay. Uh, people need to actually check with uh, on their local laws to find out what the requirements are. Uh, for instance, over here, and if a dog bites somebody, and then that's the first time the dog has bitten somebody, it's considered a uh, a rapid dog and not a vicious dog. It takes two bites on that or attempts to bite to be considered vicious. Over across the river from us in Burley, if the dog bites or attempts to bite a person or another animal, it's automatically deemed vicious. So. Like I say, you need to you need to check into your local laws on that when uh, when you have pets. Okay. Uh, to make sure what uh, what those laws where you're living on that uh, are on animals. 
All right, well, our friend Colonel Ken, Kennel Ken, or General, whatever, we're going to wish him well. Ken Mort, Minidoka Animal Control, is on his way to Dillon, Montana, as we speak. Drive carefully, my dear friend, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. All right, sounds great. You have a great day, with Deb. All right, take care. Where'd all these dogs go? Anyway, here they come. Look out. <laughs> Oh, my goodness sakes, Dog Nation. And thank you, Wheels. Appreciate it, buddy. And uh, Ken Mort, good friend of mine, and Minidoka Animal Control. Before we get our next guest on the program, I want to remind you about Cameron and Siemens Insurance. And they're located right smack dab on Highway 24 over in Rupert. And the number to call, I'm going to give you that first so you can call them and talk to them about your insurance programs. Be protected, be careful, and take care of this today. Don't put it off. Life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employment employee benefits. These folks are dedicated and very devoted to serving you. So please get a hold of them today. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. Gotcha. Oh, and by the way, I want to tell everybody about Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service at 336 South, 450 West of Paul. Scott and the crew, I'm telling you, these are first-class folks, and it's still time look at the weather outside you still got time to prune those trees that need trimming yeah you put it off and put it off now give them a call and also it's a great time to maybe put in a new lawn cedar sod they can install it and one thing too it's a great time right now and time's running short to put in a new sprinkler system or revamp your old one because soon you'll be blowing those lines out for winter you better give them a call Gano landscaping and sprinkler service and the number to call 431-8733 you call right now We all should be very proud and honored that we have uh, so many good people working for us in the state of Idaho. And this man that's coming on next is just one of those, and he's done an outstanding job. And I look forward to having him on the air anytime and anytime he can come on. And that's Senator Kelly Anthon. Good morning, Senator. How are you? Well, good morning, Zeb. How are you doing? Well, Kelly, I I can't tell you how much I appreciate your friendship and also having you on the program because you're a straight shooter and you tell it like it is, and I, I absolutely respect that. But, you know, you and I talked a little bit about a free society and how that word, that four-letter word free, is creeping up more and more for the people not only in the state of Idaho but across the board. But the facts are somebody's got to pay for it. There is no free lunch. There is no free ride. And it seems like there's more and more free stuff being offered, but the taxpayers are on the hook. How would you respond to that? Well, Zeb, I guess I would say I think you're right. Uh, For some reason... As the generations have gone by in the United States, there seems to be a contingency that believes that freedom means a free ride, getting, getting a free lifestyle, getting what they want to do and doing what they want to do without any consequence. And, uh, you, know, you know, Zeb, I didn't know exactly what we'd be talking about this morning, but I, it reminds me of Ronald Reagan. And Ronald Reagan taught uh, that freedom is never more than one generation away. And uh, he, he would say, you know, you, you can't expect your children to inherit the concepts of freedom in their blood. You've got to teach it to them. Um, and it, it kind of reminds me, Zeb, of, of partly what we're doing with the veterans groups in the Minicaja area with flag education and civic duty uh, education. Mm-hmm. Uh, imagine this, Zeb. Imagine if you spent one generation, one generation of Americans, and you never taught them a lick of, of uh, math. No math in the schools for one generation. Think of the consequences of that. I mean, it it would impact industry, it would impact science and and medicine, and just being able to do regular commerce. Uh, We would never conceive to not teach math. But what I have found is we've gotten fairly lazy about teaching civic responsibility and the, the principles that our founding fathers set up that actually provide freedom to us. And, and in, in turn, what we've kind of come to is uh, a good faction of our society uh, with their hands out and, and, and the belief that freedom means, you know, you get a free ride. 
it's a, it should be of a concern uh, to all of us. Can I say one more thing, Zeb, about freedom? Absolutely. The other thing that I, I hear when you talk about freedom generally is my concern over the way we're handling our finances in the United States. You know, I was taught growing up that uh, debt is slavery. You know, if you get in, into too much debt, especially consumer debt, um, you're beholden to the credit card company. You're beholden to the bank. They run your life. And unfortunately, I think uh, on the federal government side, that's where we're at. We've gone way too far into debt. It's the biggest national security risk, I think, that we have. Well, there's so many areas that we could get into this morning, but I want to back up just a little bit, take a big, giant step back into what you said about our forefathers. Right now, there was a story that uh, came up on the national news yesterday, and I picked up on it this morning, That, and it always seems to happen with the liberal loons, first and foremost, in San Francisco. They, the San Francisco United uh, and Unified School District, headed up by Board of Education President Matt Haney, wants to strike the name of George Washington High School and banish it. They want to take it away. Because he says George Washington was a slave owner, and we are not going to further and perpetrate the goodness of George Washington because he was a slave owner. And I said this earlier. I don't know if you were listening. Kelly, what happened 300 years ago was an accepted practice. How dare we today look back on our history, look back on our historical figures, and condemn them and banish them because we think today that is wrong. I mean, that was a part of their lifestyle then. We have our lifestyle now, but we can't banish from our history books people that helped this country grow. Well, that's right, Zeb. I mean, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. And uh, I guess you call it uh, next day quarterbacking. I don't know what you call it. But what we do know is that we are not using the name of George Washington to further the concept of slavery. We, we celebrate what George Washington did to found the country, to defeat the British, and to set up a system of government that has been as perfect as it can come in the history of all the world. And it's provided what we call exceptionalism. This concept that if we're born Americans, if we become Americans, we have more opportunity. We have more chances of success and happiness in our life, of property ownership, of the ability to participate in government, than any other person in the history of all the world. And that's why we, we're talking about George Washington. We're not talking about his weaknesses. Uh, we can recognize him. We can talk about him if we need to. But the reason why we're naming a school George Washington is because of what I've just described. Uh, we we somehow get lost in the weeds in trying to find fault with uh, these folks, these founding fathers of ours, instead of really recognizing the amazing blessings they've bestowed upon us. Absolutely. You know... You want to get me mad, that's one subject right there, and I'm going to keep fighting for these absolutely liberal loons that are trying... You know what, some of the names, listen to this, I I want you to respond. Some of the names that they want to take and put up on the wall at this high school in San Francisco instead of George Washington, and here's some of the submitted names, Cesar Chavez High School. Or, here's the one that really raised my ire, Harvey Milk High School. Holy smokes, if you know anything about the history of those people, name a high school after them in place of George Washington? This is lunacy. You know, uh, I guess my response to that, Zeb, is I'm not impressed. And, you know, uh, going, just speaking this, I can, just a little more about this, some of the flag education, the civic education that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you think about it, People will take care of those things they love. I mean, think of anything. It might be a, whether it's an animal or it's your favorite, your car that you love or what, your home. Um, if you really care about those things, you take care of them. And when we, when we go into our public education system and belittle the country and belittle the patriotic ideals, belittle the Constitution, and, and only point out the weaknesses and the problems of our founders, only point out the weaknesses and problems of our of our current society we're not creating a generation of people that will care about the country we're creating a, a, a group that will be apathetic they will be destructive and it will not help us in the long run 
One of the things that uh, Kelly and I talked about on the telephone yesterday prior to coming on the air, and I, he knows my passion for this next subject, I absolutely am appalled and downright teed off that our senior citizens are not getting more respect and care than what they are. I mean, there's a diminishment of value by our society to anybody 65 years of age and older. Everything in our society is geared towards the kids. Oh, you need new soccer uniforms? We'll get them. You need a new soccer field? We'll get it. Need a new baseball glove? We'll go get that for you. But nothing goes for the seniors, the shut-ins, the people that may have had their spouse die. They can't get out of the house. They can't go get their meals. And the Meals on Wheels program is the only thing they have to survive and yet there's no support for the seniors i'm off my soapbox i'll let you have it senator well zeb you know i'm going to agree with you i i uh i think as a community it's time for us to step up a little bit better with regard to this because the fact is it's just like we're talking about this morning we can't expect the federal government especially uh i hate to say this but to do the right thing here I mean, if you look at just the way our veterans have been treated um, during the course of the last 15 years by the federal government, I mean, I still get calls from veterans who are talking about the waits at hospitals, the inability to get care, um, and some of those things. I've worked with local veterans just to get transportation to and from the hospital. And yet what we can do is look around, and you will see, and, and everybody who's listening will know this, you can see abuse of the system. You can see those who are able-bodied, willing, or not willing, but able to work. Uh, there's no reason why they can't be working, but they're sitting and they're receiving benefits. Um, there are some priority issues in our, in our society, in our culture, that we have to keep talking about. And that's why I appreciate you bringing it up, Zeb. I think it has to be a public discourse. It has to be a, a, a discourse about who, what, where should we really be prioritizing um, taxpayer dollars? Uh, what are the values as a, as, a, as a country we should be cherishing and, and celebrating and pushing? Um, and many people say none of the above. You know, it's none of, it's, it's none of the government's business. And I, I, can, I appreciate that. But, again, like I said, I think that if you take a, a generation and you don't teach them some correct values, uh, you're going to be sorry in the long run. Would there be, and I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, Kelly, but, uh, you know, you're a senator and I'm a talk show host and it's my job to bring up these issues, but would there be ever an opportunity that our legislative body could look at this issue with our seniors and understand and realize they can't work, they can't get out of the house, many are disabled, nobody has any funding for the Meals on Wheels program or whatever program, what are we going to do? Would the state ever consider looking into this and perhaps helping like they do with the children's education and other children's advocacy issues? Zeb, I think the answer to that is there certainly is, I think, the possibility of state government looking at it. I'll tell you what I think are the differences and some of the, the problems that you'd run into. Um, one is that I think the reason why the state focuses so much on the education component is because under the Idaho Constitution they're charged to. So if you read the Idaho Constitution, it'll say the legislature is supposed to provide for this, this free and public education system. And it will be silent on some of these other welfare issues, these, these needs of legitimate needs of our seniors. And so I think that there's just uh, and this is not an excuse, that's just, I think, a real explanation as to why you see state government fo focused one more way than the other. But that also having been said, um, you know, the federal government, in creating the Social Security system and creating some of these supposed safety nets many, many years ago, um, took the lead, took the charge, and taxed us, <laughs> as you know, when you get your paycheck tax us a considerable amount of money and continues to tax us a considerable amount of money to take care of these needs as they present themselves. Um, so the answer, Zeb, is yes. I think that the state government can be talking about it. They can be looking at that. Um, you know, I know that Fred Wood was on, I think, last week with you or this week. I can't remember. Yes. But, you know, it's, it's a similar discussion when you talk about this uh, concept of health care because um, there really is no state charge to do that. Now, under the Tenth Amendment, arguably it's the state's business, but, um, but what you find is you've got all the money sitting with the federal government. They're overspending. They're going into debt. 
And then when they when they decide to come into Idaho to help us, they tell us how we're going to do it. And that's 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 just a real problem on a lot of different levels, not just health care. I tell you, not just uh, the seniors. I tell you what. I was also taught Zeb growing up that, you know, when you have a, a need like this, you first look to family. You might then look to your community, to your church, and then you go to the federal government. Right. I've just n- never been taught to rely too much on the federal government. Uh, you know, it's like uh, Ronald Reagan, I think, used to also say, the, the worst thing that you can hear is we're the government and we're here to help you. Um, but, yeah, no, there's a, there's a role to play. I mean, we as a society have to look out for the folks who have served us, have worked hard, have raised families, and now are in a predicament where they can't even afford to eat. Yeah. We have a Christian duty to step up to that. You know, Kelly, I'm going to ask you to have an indulgence for about 60 seconds. I've got to get a weather forecast in here, so stay on the line. We're talking to Senator Kelly Anthon. We'll be right back. Right now, our weather is brought to you by Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company CPAs. Curtis Pope, Todd Phillips, Rob Oaks, Mitch Goodwin, Heather Daly, and Lydon Crane. And they've been providing accounting services to the Minicash area since well over 50 years. With the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, bookkeeping services, services, payroll services, retirement planning. All you have to do is ask, get an appointment, and learn how they can help you. Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company CPAs. And right now, here's the weather with Gina. All righty, here is a look at your weather forecast for this Thursday, September 8th. It's going to be nice, but it is going to be windy. Sunny skies is what we're expecting. High of 73 tonight, low of 43. Winds out of the west right around 18 miles an hour. Tomorrow, winds are going to be dying down. Sunny skies, high of 70 with an overnight low of 38. Saturday, looks like sunny skies, high close to 80, overnight low of 46. But for Sunday, Winds are going to be picking up again out of the west right around 20 miles an hour, but it's going to be mostly sunny skies, high of 80 as well. That is your weather forecast for Zebatoran. Thank you, Gina. Brought to everybody by Pope Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, and Company CPAs with locations at 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. We're on the air with Senator Kelly Anthon. Kelly, I want to back up just for a second to Medicaid again. And uh, I'm sure that you have forgotten more about Medicaid than I will ever know. But I've, I've looked at this problem with Medicaid. I've looked at the numbers of 78,000, give or take a few, in the state of Idaho without Medicaid or coverage. And the Democrats, correct me if I'm wrong, want to give a carte blanche coverage to that 78,000 with an increase in Medicaid. And I'm saying, wait a minute, whoa. Why can't we save a little money? It might take a little effort, but let's discern who of that 78,000 really qualifies. Because I'll guarantee you there are people in that 78,000 that could be self-sustaining, they could get a job, they could earn their own living, and quite frankly, like you and me, they can pay their own way. Am I wrong? Well, I don't think you're wrong. I think you're going to find that there's truth in the statement you just made that inside that 78,000, if that's the real number, that there are people who can provide. Now, now the, the interesting thing about the 78,000 that we're told is that many of those people are working. They're actually working to the point where they don't qualify for Medicaid uh, benefits under the current system because they're actually making too much money. But they don't quite, uh, that's why they call it the gap. They're not quite to the level of income um, where it's financially feasible for them to have the insurance part of the, the program. So, so no, you're not wrong, but it is a, it's a unique problem. I'll tell you what else I think we, let me, understand, let me tell you what I understand about where we come up with this number of 78,000. This 78,000, as I understand it, is an estimate based on the number of people who have applied for Medicaid and were not given Medicaid. And so, um, as I've looked into this a little bit, and I've looked at other states who have actually gone ahead and expanded Medicaid, they find out that there are, in many instances, many more people than were initially believed uh, to be out there that would qualify under the new Medicaid expansion, meaning you get a whole bunch of new people running in for for benefits. Um, And that can cost a lot more money. And money is really the crux of this matter, because when we talk about Medicaid expansion, we're talking about accepting a whole bunch of new money from the federal government and doing what they tell us to do with that money and with our program. 
And that has not been, let's, let's be honest, that has not been a recipe for success in the United States. And when you consider the fact that the federal government is so far in debt, um, there are those who exercise their conscience to say, we're not going to spend one more dime. And, that, and I hear that in state government. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a need. I think there really is a need for, for health care for a lot of folks. And you've mentioned some of these folks, Deb. I mean, even some of our elderly really struggle, uh, even with the Medicare program, with some of their, their, their needs. Um, and the Medicare program, of course, has its limits. But um, I think that there are, is some creative thinking being done on the state level. Uh, there were a couple of proposals on the state side to help people get some primary care where, they're, where they are destitute, where they're in, unable to work and so forth, uh, that would not cause an increase in taxes. Now, that's, where, that's the sweet spot. I mean, if you can show the, the people of Idaho that we can fix this problem without raising your taxes, um, that's the place to start. Um, the other problem, of course, with taking money from the federal government is there are no guarantees that once you start the program, and expand Medicaid, that they will continue to give you the money. It, that, that, that Medicaid expansion was offered with a, a term certain it could expire. So the thing we want to be careful about in Idaho is that if we expand Medicaid in any way, whether they let us run the program or not, that we don't end up a few years down the road with no way to pay for a program we've now created and people are relying on. Absolutely. So lots of problems there, and it's going to continue to be debated. Uh, I know they're studying that again. Uh, Fred Wood, as you know, a, a doctor from our, our district, is uh, kind of a lead voice in trying to sort that all out. And, of course, the other thing, Zeb, is Obamacare. Obamacare has thrown health care on its head. Um, I sit on the Kazakh County Hospital Board, and one of the things that uh, we see is there are some changes coming. And I don't know that they're all, well, I do know. They're not all positive. They're not going to be positive. I was never a fan of Obamacare, and I don't think it's going to serve us all that well. So a lot of challenges ahead on, on health issues, a lot of challenges on Medicaid. Uh, and uh, you're right, Deb. I think that what we have is a system that is often cheated. And then, and, and then on the other hand, we're leaving behind the people who really need it. Absolutely. We are, and I've only got about three minutes left, Kelly, so we'll temper our remarks a little bit. But we are about 60 days away from what I think is the most important election ever held in this country, even though it might not be with the two best candidates. That being said, uh, I want your opinion as to where we're headed, what we need to do, and what does the election look like right now 60 days away. Uh, You're absolutely right. This is probably the most important election maybe in all of U.S. history. And you're also right that I don't think there's as much excitement about the candidates as maybe we would hope. Uh, And I guess what I would say is to anyone who uh, is listening, you know, um, I'm not super crazy about Donald Trump, but I would vote for him all day long uh, before I'd vote for Hillary Clinton. And I say that because where we're headed is we're headed to seating a new judge on the U.S. Supreme Court. And if we don't get control of that, we as a people, we as, as, as a conservative group, um, we're going to see many more drastic fundamental changes to our country and our society uh, that uh, really frighten me. If you look back at the last few decades, you'll see how influential the U.S. Supreme Court has been using activist judges to change fundamentals in society. And it's not right, and we've got to get, we've got to get control of that. You know, we uh, appreciate your taking the time to come on this program, Kelly, and there's a lot of things we didn't get a chance to talk about. But real quick, uh, I've got 30 seconds left. Looking towards the legislative session coming up in January, hot issues, just name them, and then I've got to run. Water law, uh, foster care is going to be important. We may be looking at some tax cuts. Uh, Economic development incentives and and those kinds of tools are just a few that come to mind right off the cuff. I can't thank you enough. You have been so amenable in the past to coming on this program and helping us out. You did a wonderful job, Senator Kelly Anthon. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'm probably going to see you on Saturday, am I not? You will. I'll be there. All right, my friend. Take care. Rupert Square.
All right. Th- and thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you, Zeb. You have a good day. Thank you very much. Senator Kelly Anthon, and i uh, got a lot of respect for that man. I really do. He's doing a wonderful job as a state senator. Well, let's take a look. What have I got cooking here real quick that I've got to take care of? I think I've got all that done. I know I've got all that done. And you know what? Now I get a chance to tell you that if you're hungry and starving to death... I know some great places to go. How about this? We'll start off with La Hacienda. West Main, the old Chadwick building in Burley. Oh, they they have got phenomenal lunches starting at just $6.20 with over 16 different choices. And it's all fresh. None of that canned stuff. No, they've got fresh, delicious lunches at La Hacienda. West Main, the old Chadwick building. Stop in today. Well, how about the AC drive-in at 601 East Main in Burley? Oh, listen to this. You gotta love banana splits. Oh, 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 I love that. Along with the orange and lemonade freezes. Mmm. I'm drooling. How about the chicken fried steak sandwich with fries and a drink? Oh, my goodness. Famous Farmer Brown Burgers. All of this and more at the AC drive-in. 601 East Main in Burley. And and then we'll jump over to Burgers Etc. Two locations to serve you. 124 South Oneida and 700 Overland and Burley. Oh, my goodness sakes. Corn dogs and burritos. Only 99 cents after 3 p.m. And then every Sunday at the Burley location, shrimp dinner. Oh, my goodness. Great staff. Nice, nice people serving you with great food at Burgers Etc. in Rupert and Burley. Well, then that takes us over the taco bandido my goodness they've got listen to this they've got bacon with jalapeno in it i've had it it is fantabulous and all the remodeling is done go on in there and try the breakfast burrito knock your boots off delicious you're gonna love it all the food on the menu at taco bandido 2301 overland in burley well, we're over now at Stevo's at 290 South, 600 West in Hayburn. Yep, yep, yep. At least until the weather turned bad, the patio's open, and they've got those buffalo burgers made with real buffalo meat. They're delicious. They are delicious. Fresh hand-cut fries, a great menu, and boy, I'm telling you what, nice people, friendly servers, dedicated staff, and they're open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 9. You stop over to Stevo's in Hayburn. And last but not least, we have El Caparral, 610 Overland and Burley. Man, I am drooling. Lunch, dinner, drinks, parties, whatever to celebrate your own occasion. And they're open Monday through Saturday, 11 to 10. My goodness sake, Sundays from 9.30 to 9. Oh, you're going to love the authentic and delicious Mexican food. Yep, and the red salsa. Mmm! delicious el caparral 610 overland in burley and those are just a few great places to go if you are hungry and starving to death i am we're going to take a little break and come back with cash county school days our business salute and other things don't go away zeb at the ranch i'll see you in six Here we are rolling into our number three. And uh, by golly, Zeb at the Ranch, I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services. Always there serving you, taking care of your garbage, 734-6969. Real short answer, Wheels, how you doing over there this morning? I'm great. How are you, sir? Kind of shocked. I surprised you a little bit, didn't I? Yeah, you you threw me for a loop there for a second. Well, don't do that. It's too, it's too hard to get you back out of that loop. So be careful over there. I I'm I am I'm paying attention as much as I can and uh, <laughs> just making sure that your pot levels are good and so when you say pot levels, when you say pot levels, young man, you always today have to be more explicit. Pot levels on the sound, not the stuff that makes the wacky tobacco. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, your level, your levels as far as your volume when you're speaking over the <laughs> okay. air. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot for everything. Appreciate it. Uh, you say pot levels today, and somebody's going, hey, man, I'm not at the right level. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Let me quickly remind you about our dear friends at Lennox. Ramsey Heating Electric, and they can offer rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems, whether it's gas furnaces, air conditioners, or heat pumps. You and your family will enjoy the comfort. Yes, call 678-0459 and learn how Ramsey Heating and Electric can save you money with Lennox. Okay? Got you covered on that. Now, last hour... We had a great big uh, kind of a extended commercial about our dear friends uh, Jerry Zollinger and the crew up there at Zollinger Quarter Horses. They're going to have their big 28th annual production sale coming up this Saturday, September 10th. Preview at 10, sale at 11. I'll tell you something, boys and girls. You want horses? You want good horses? You want athletic horses? You want horses with personality, confirmation, and color? Yep. This is the sale for you. Get up there at Zollinger Quarter Horse Sale at 1994 South, 100 East of Oakley, right at the ranch. Great, great horses. I guarantee you're going to have a great time, and the equine business is alive and well at Zollinger Quarter Horse Ranch in Oakley. Oh, my goodness sakes, what else have we got here real quick? i got to look down my list, and uh, I want to remind you that uh, we're about ready to have our next segment on the program start, and that is, of course, Cassia County School Days. I have to thank again a wonderful lady that has done so much to line us up with our guests for this segment, Debbie Critchfield, the Cassia County Schools Communications Officer. Wonderful job. I don't thank her enough, and I mean that. Thank you very much. Our sponsors are A Child's World, 1308 Overland in Burley, and they've got hundreds of school clothes, and they've got all the jeans, shirts, coats, everything. Coats right now, very special. And uh, they've got uh, all kinds of clothing and they've got uh, layaways available gift wrapping free they've got the cherokee scrubs and all the shoes my goodness a child's world 1308 overland in burley and the other sponsor the ambulatory surgery center it is the only facility in southern idaho for glaucoma surgery and uh, believe me colonoscopies outpatient knee foot hand surgery please call them ambulatory surgery center at 1344 highland in berlin the number to call 677-8888 right now we're going to jump on over to Cashew High School and the ag science teacher jason fillmore good morning jason how are you Good morning, Zed. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing well. Well, now tell us just a little bit, give you a chance to brag and everything. Tell us a little bit about what you do, what you teach, and what's going on at Kasha High School. We've got a lot going on at Kasha High School, as always. So this is my third year here at the school and fifth year in Kasha School District, and I teach um, ag science. And something unique about our school is that all the science classes our kids take are all ag science. So they're all applied and... Um, and very applicable to the, the area we live in, the industry, and future jobs that students could have. So I have a great group of students, and we're in our third year of getting an FFA chapter going. So that's something that a lot of people don't know about. The Alternative School has an FFA chapter. Um, and we've, been, we've just been getting, doing some really fun things, and there's lots of changes actually district-wide in our ag program. So it's pretty exciting time. All right, Jason, now I'm going to get right down to the nuts and bolts of this thing. I'm going to make some statements, and I want you to follow up with either a rebuttal or an agreement with me. I am really getting nervous in this country that agriculture is not appreciated by current political administrations, and it's kind of a, oh, well, we can import it from another country atmosphere. Uh, What are your thoughts? I think that what you're doing as an ag science teacher is absolutely a necessity but I think a lot of people think, oh, well, we'll just have it grown someplace else. What are your thoughts? I think unless people want to have one of the highest food costs in the world, then we better keep home growing our, our crops and our livestock because we have one of the cheapest food supplies in the whole country. So unless people want that to change, they better, better get behind American agriculture. Okay, but don't quit there because explain to me and my audience, you know, the general consumer, do they know, do they appreciate, do they understand American agriculture? Do they understand that it's the safest produced food in the world? I mean, elaborate on that a little bit. 
It is. You're absolutely right. Um, I think a lot of people, because we're so many generations now removed from the farm, they don't have that understanding of what it actually takes to grow food. And we're doing that on a small scale here at Casual High School. We have um, two different garden sites at our school, and we started last year raising rabbits at school. So we're getting our, we got a barn donated by Coast to Coast Carports last year, and um, we'll get our rabbit production facility up so that kids that are removed from the farm several generations can understand how much work it takes just to grow one product. And um, I think the average public doesn't understand that. And they also see that, you know, they don't know anybody that's a farmer, and so they don't think it's a very common occupation or it's a very common job. But what they don't realize is all of that value-added um, economy and infrastructure that's related to agriculture. So I don't think we would have, um, you know, near the population or the quality of schools or the health care that we have in this area if it wasn't for the agriculture that's this year. You know, how did you get started in a JSAR? Are you from here? Are you from this region? Or are you a transplant from someplace else? Tell us a little bit about you. I grew up in the Twin Falls area. I went to school in both Twin Falls and then graduated from Kimberly High School and was involved in 4-H and FFA all growing up. And neither of my parents were in production agriculture, but we lived out in the country and had a little hobby farm. And I uh, went to college up at the best university in the state, so University of Idaho in Moscow, and stayed up north for a few years and then came back uh, to this area. I noticed that you had to get that plug-in for the Vandals, the best university in the state, right? Yeah, go Vandals. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, what, what motivated you? Really, what motivated you, if you didn't come from a farm family, why did you get into it? I really have to give credit to the FFA. Um, being involved in high school showed me that that was something I didn't want to give up after four years of high school. So I wanted, um, selfishly wanted to stay involved in that awesome organization for the rest of my career. And then also just had always worked um, in all my jobs growing up was with kids. And I liked, uh, I'm the oldest sibling, so I like to be in charge. <laughs> so I thought a teacher, um, being an agriculture teacher fit well with, with both of those passions, both for agriculture and and, and being in charge and working with kids. <laughs> okay, now, what, what sets you apart? I want you to brag on your program a little bit at Cashew High School. What sets you apart as a teacher and also what you're doing at Cash High School? Are there any special things going on? Um, I think it just, overall, for our whole staff, it takes a special kind of teacher to want to work at the Alternative High School. So um, I just enjoy being part of the culture here and being part of a staff that is really here for kids. We're not just the 8 to 3 um, type of staff. We put in lots of hours, and all of our teachers do. So I, I really enjoy being part of that. And as, as far as our ag program goes, um, I don't know any other alternative school in the state that has an ag program. They do teach agriculture at um, Juniper Hills, which is the school at the residential juvenile detention facility. So that's kind of cool, but we're kind of one step one step lower than that at the alternative school and uh, this summer I was at a class in Oregon and met a teacher from Washington that teaches ag at, at an alternative school and we're planning um, an exchange so we're gonna they're gonna try to come visit us this fall her and her some of her students and we're gonna go there in the spring and so um, I think just really offering this to students that wouldn't normally <laughs> normally get it you know they they get their math their English their history and not a lot of the students that go to an alternative school get, get to participate in ag and FFA. All right, now I'm going to ask you this. For the benefit of my audience that might not know or understand the terminology alternative high school, what does it mean and what about the students? Explain that, if you would, please. Yeah, so a lot of people that haven't been around our school have the perception that it's just all the bad kids or the kids that get kicked out. But we serve um, a really diverse population of students. We have a daycare at our school, so one of the qualifications kids can have is that they're a teen parent. Both the mom and the dad are eligible to go to our school. Um, we have students that have social or emotional needs where they can't attend a regular high school, so it might be something like extreme social anxiety where a huge crowd um, sends them to a panic attack, and so they need to be in a smaller environment. Uh, or it could be behavior needs that are better served with a, in a small class size and not a class of 30. Um, and then we do have students that are referred by the court system. Um, they, the, we work really closely with the juvenile justice system, and they know the, what the students can benefit by going to our school, and so they might be referred by court. Um, or they might, the 
kind of the lowest, like, or the smallest group of kids has been kicked out of a normal, a regular high school. Um, but for the most part, it's for kids that just need something different. And the word alternative just means something different. They need something different than a mainstream high school. Hey, let me ask you this, Jason. Uh, I know that if you've been teaching any course, be it math, be it English, be it agriculture, that you've got some heartwarming stories. Give us one about some of the students, maybe now currently, or some of the students from the past. Give me a really good story about students that appreciated you and the course at the alternative school. Yeah, I have one um, a student that was not doing well in a mainstream high school and had came to us with lots of F's on their transcript. Uh, that's another qualification they could come because of attendance or grades. So um, had just wasn't wasn't plugged in and didn't feel like they needed to put effort into high school. And so they got to our school and um, became interested in the classes and found a group of friends that they really felt well with. And, and I connected with a student through FFA, was able to take this student on trips out of town had never he'd never been to moscow and we got to go to university of idaho ag days um and kind of brought in that student's um, exposure to the world and then that student ended up having the opportunity to go to the um, national guard challenge academy in pierce idaho and spent um spent uh, six months there and was able to get a whole bunch of credits for a whole bunch of classes and now is back in a mainstream high school and doing very well. Oh, so, man. I'm, I'm real proud of that student. You, and he probably knows who he is if, if he's listening. <laughs> let, let me ask you this question then. Um, of the students that you teach or the students that come into your class, and I've only got a couple of minutes left here, but is there kind of an, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the hicks and the sticks. We're going to talk about farm and whoop de doo Have you noticed a big transition in their thinking and research? Respect for agriculture. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of kids, whether it's at Burley or Declo or anywhere else, they think of ag as just being, you know, we used to say plows and cows and sows. And um, I like to say, and a lot of other teachers in ag say it's, it's now about beakers, speakers, and knowledge seekers or job seekers. And so we we just try to educate those students that there's a whole lot more to agriculture than just raising plants and animals, and try to go on. Um, tours of all the businesses around here that offer, you know, $18, $19, $20 an hour jobs um, that are related to food production or transportation um, in, in the agricultural industry. So, Absolutely. Yeah, it's a mind shift we have to work on, but it happens. What's your favorite part? Real quick, last question. What's your favorite part of teaching ag science? I mean, everybody's got a favorite aspect I, of everything. So I like the aha moment. So um, students will have kind of general knowledge of some scientific concepts and then I teach it to them in the con in the um, kind of in the realm of agriculture and it really makes sense so pH is one you know you'd ask the average person what do you know about pH and well maybe there's acids and there's bases but then we put it in the context of soil science and how pH affects how nutrients are uptaken by the plant and they it's kind of that aha moment that's my favorite part oh my god you know what i'm going to tell you this i don't think we've ever met but i want to compliment you you are i can tell an excellent teacher and i compliment the ag science teacher of Cassia high school jason fillmore you got to promise me to come back on the program okay is she there I, I said, you've got to promise me to come back on the program. You do a wonderful job. Oh, I will. I always beg Debbie Critchfield, so I, I like coming on, so thanks for having me. All right. Thank you very much. And that, of course, Jason Fillmore from Casha High School, the ag science teacher. You could just tell the enthusiasm in her voice about what she's doing, what she's teaching, and her students. Man, I'll tell you what, she's a good lady. Good lady. Right now, I want to remind you, too, I don't know why she was having trouble hearing me. We've got to watch that a little bit. Uh, Ramsey Heating and Electric offering rebates on qualified Lennox home comfort systems. Don't forget to give Ramsey's a call at 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric trying to save you money on Lennox. You'd be sure and get a hold of them today. Cool summers and warm winters at Ramsey Heating and Electric and Lennox. Absolutely good people. 
Okay, we're going to run over to the telephone right now, and we're going to have another guest on the air with us. Now, I have not talked to this lady before. I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of an excite, uh, exciting time right now because uh, she runs a business in Burley called La Vintage Boutique at 1240 Oakley Avenue in Burley. They're open Tuesday through Friday, 1030 to 530, Saturdays 11 to 4, and we have with us on the telephone right now, I believe, the lovely owner, Elizabeth Coyle. Elizabeth, how are you this morning? It's still ringing, sir. Still ringing? Okay, well, you let me know when it stops ringing and we get her on the air, okay? Yes, yes sir. It uh, went to her voicemail. Oh, that's not a good sign. Well, hopefully she'll answer the phone in just a second, so keep trying. Keep trying. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, no, not yes, ma'am. Uh, believe me, don't go there. Anyway, don't forget the great big America's Best Sale going on at least Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley. Oh, my goodness, all the mattresses. All the mattresses. And and all the door buster issues like the bunk beds and the desks and the sofas. Oh, my goodness sakes. And don't forget, too, they've got the lift recliners. For those that are having a little trouble getting out of the chair, those lift recliners are really something. you got to go in and check it out. All the dining room sets, all of this and more. With our friends at 459 Overland and Burley, Lee's Furniture, Floors, and more. No money down, no interest until 2017 on a credit don't forget it lease furniture floors and more how we doing wheels i'm still getting her voicemail every time oh well keep on calling my friend keep on calling and in the interim we'll take other calls if you'd like to give us a jingle at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587 we wanted to get elizabeth coyle on the air and have her as our business salute for this week and uh hopefully we can catch her in just a very few moments let's see coming up this weekend we have of course the ninth annual POW MIA ceremony and we're going to be talking to a couple of gentlemen connected with that in just a few minutes at the bottom of the hour and that's my dear friends George Mass and Larry Cottom they're here in the studio and I'm looking forward to finding out more about it and I want to remind you real quick that next Thursday Next Thursday, we are going to be at Ramsey Heating and Electric for our entire program. And it's hats off to farmers and salute to our military. We do this every year, and it's going to be next Thursday. And uh, we'll start our remote broadcast like we do here, 8.06 till 11. But we're going to be there early in the morning at 7 o'clock because the Rupert Veterans Memorial Group is going to serve delicious breakfast out in the parking lot of biscuits and gravy, and it's only $3.00 a person and the proceeds go to the Christmas Helping Santa Fund. So don't miss that. Coming up on Thursday of next week, our remote broadcast over at Ramsey Heating and Electric. Have you tried to get her to? We can't find her. We... uh, you talked to her yesterday and reminded her, and she's gone. Let's check with Wheels. Wheels, any success? No, sir. It still just goes to her voicemail. Uh, I don't know what happened, but the lost are not found. Okay, well, we didn't have our business salute this morning, unfortunately, but uh, I'll go ahead and tell you all about La Vintage Boutique, 1240 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Yes, they have all kinds of very, very cute dresses and jewelry, women's and children clothing, and antiques. Oh, boy, you're not going to find me up on the shelf, but they've got really neat antiques, home decor items, and many, many homemade items, great gift giving. Oh, yeah, it's that time of the year. You better be thinking ahead to the fall and winter, Christmas right around the corner. Hey, I'm not kidding you. It's time to think about it. Come in and browse and take your time. Absolutely at La Vintage Boutique. 1240 Oakley Avenue in Burley with Elizabeth Coyle. And again, they're open Tuesday through Friday, 1030 to 530, Saturdays 11 to 4. There you go. Well, we couldn't find our guest for this hour. And let's see what else have I got on my little program sheet here for this morning. Did all of you folks get a chance to take in some of that military forum last night hosted by NBC's Matt Lauer? I got to tell you that uh, I thought Trump 
and I know I'm prejudiced, I don't like Hillary Clinton, but most of the pundits said this morning, those that aren't uh, absolutely with their hands tied behind their back liberals, said that Trump absolutely did a better job last night, and General Michael Flynn was very supportive of Trump this morning and agreed with Trump that the O administration, the Obama administration, has reduced our generals, their thinking, and their formats to absolute rubble. Now, originally when Trump said that, everybody climbed out of the woodwork and condemned him for saying the generals have been reduced to rubble, but it's true. With the Obama format and the way of doing things and the world situation today, even General Michael Flynn agreed that, quite frankly, our military has been reduced, not in its might, not in its stature, but because of Obama, it's been reduced to basically with their hands tied behind their back. And, by the way, too, the latest CNN poll coming out this morning showed that Donald Trump was in the lead in most areas across the United States, over Hillary Clinton. So those are some other things that need to be brought out. Uh, Let's see what else. High school football really in full swing tomorrow night, and college football. This weekend, the Boise State Broncos take on Washington State on the blue turf up in Boise. That should be a good game. And for those that are absolutely chomping on the bit, tonight... Tonight, the NFL starts, and the opening game for the NFL, the Denver Broncos against the Carolina Panthers. So that brings you up to speed there. We're going to send it back over to our main studios right now for about three or four minutes, and we'll be back in just a moment with more Zeb at the Ranch. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh, welcome back and thank you very much. I've got two gentlemen in the studio right now and I mean that. They're very good friends. I like to kid with both of them and uh, uh, they've done so much for the ninth annual POW MIA ceremony which is coming up this Saturday over at the Rupert Square and first and foremost I want to say good morning to Larry Cottom. Good morning Larry. Hi, how you doing? I'm fantastic. You're traveling in pretty rough company. You know that, don't you? (laughs) Oh yeah, but uh you know, and I kind of feel sorry for Donna, trying to keep him straightened out, and I've got to help her out once in a while to do you it. You need to ride home, too, buddy. Remember that. There is not a whip or a ruler that could keep him straightened out. Let me tell you something. No, Donna's probably got a really big club, I think. Oh, I hope so. And the other person that we're referring to as the bad boy is George Mass, my dear, dear friend. George, how are you? Good morning, Zeb. Uh, thank you for the time uh, you're going to give us today. Well, I want to talk about a subject. I think I've been at almost every one. I think I missed one about six years ago, POW MIA ceremony. I had a rodeo that same weekend, and I couldn't get free, but I've been at all the others. Yes, you have, Zeb, and we've been very very appreciative of it. Okay, what is it? I mean, let's go right from the basics. The POW MIA ceremony. Are there those still that don't understand or know what's going on? Larry, we'll start with you. Give us, and hold that real close, explain it to us. I, I think there probably is that uh, I can remember when I was still working that uh, I had a young gentleman in my office that asked me what the POW MIA stood for. And I had to explain it to him that, you know, that we've, uh, the prisoner of wars and missing in action. We've still uh, missing 1,800 people from uh, Vietnam, 8,000 people from uh, Korea. Oh, my. And, uh, you know, overall, there's probably 100,000 POW MIAs. So people need to know we need to keep looking for it. With the new DNA now, if we can find them, we can identify them. It takes a while, but they're able to do it. They found some World War II veterans that they've been able to identify, and that's good. That brings a little bit of closure to the family, so we don't can't 
not forget about these people. Larry, let me ask you this, and really be forthright and honest on this question. And I've talked to many, many veterans across our United States. I was on the phone not too long ago to a veteran in Florida, and we were talking about having him come on my program and visit about another subject. And he still believes to this day his brother was a Vietnam veteran and uh, was taken prisoner. And he honestly believes to this day that his brother is still alive and captive over in Vietnam. Is that possible? I I believe that he's probably right, and I believe this way myself. I'm not sure they're in Vietnam. I kind of believe maybe they could be in Russia or China or maybe Vietnam. But I'm sure that, you know, we didn't get back a lot of them guys, and they could still be alive over there someplace. Uh, When I brought the move them all to Rupert, I was at a meeting one day, uh, promoting it and had a guy ask me the same question he says do you believe that there's any live POWs left from Vietnam and I says yes I really do and I really do would you discern the difference George uh, get up real close to that microphone uh, prisoner of war missing in action discern the difference between those two uh, phrases uh, prisoner of war is one that was captured and held captive during the war. MIA is missing in action, and they don't know what happened to them. I see. They uh, they could be captured. They could be killed in action. They have no idea. I'll ask you the same question, because we've talked about this on numerous occasions in the past. Uh, the possibility or the feasibility of are there still perhaps American soldiers that are still held captive? Possibly. I disagree with Larry a little bit on this. At our age, I was probably one of them. My generation uh, as was young, so anybody that was POW is in their 70s. Well, I'm, 60, I'm 68. But with the living conditions yeah. and what they went through, it's skeptical. I hope they still are. But the, uh, I talked to a gentleman that... Uh, had a lot to do with that back over in Cambodia and Laos and, and that. And he said a lot of those uh, POWs are shipped to Russia. Yeah. I will say this, though. When you look at what happened with Iran and is still happening with Iran, holding our American prisoners, releasing some, still holding some, why couldn't it be possible? It is. It, it's possible. Uh, Hopeful, I guess, more hopeful than possible. Well, I guess what I'm, I, well, guess what I'm asking is, both of you served. Uh, Larry, you were in off the coast of Vietnam on an aircraft in area. the Navy, right? Yeah. Both you guys are Navy guys. Yep. Yes. Okay, so I got to really watch what I say. You You'll drop that. anchor on me, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> but both of you served our country, and I can't imagine, and I can't, the horror of being taken prisoner, and nobody really caring. No, and Zeb, you know, uh, Larry and I, over the last nine years, we've talked to a lot of POWs, talked to the families of POWs. All they will, the POWs will tell their families or tell us is up the time they was captured, after that they close the door. They, it's a part of their uh, life that they blocked out. I've got a good friend that's uh, and the combat veteran that's POW. And we put that avenue of flags up in Rupert. I asked him if he'd do the honor of raising that flag. And boy, he got all of me. He said, I don't want nothing to do with it. Really? But he was there to support it. Yes. It's uh, Russell Smith, for an example. Uh, Zeb, you read his story. I know and, Russell very well. And what he went through at uh, just liberating him. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's tough. We have a caller with a question. Go ahead. You're on the air. Quickly, please. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, Zeb? Yes. Go ahead, please. You uh, just ask a question if you think there's some still alive. If you read Bo Wright's call to serve, he was the most decorated Green Beret Delta Force that was over there. He had information that there was definitely prisoners of war there, and every time he would go to try to retrieve them, somebody would let the cat out of the bag, just like Hillary does with everything, and go ahead, and he was coming around one island, and here come a gunboat the other way. And they had just moved the prisoners from where they were. Oh, my. I would say there are still definitely prisoners there. I certainly pray there are not, but uh, if there are, my heart and my uh, my feelings go out to these poor, poor soldiers they that have been have forgotten. Having some Korean War ones up in the, yeah. the island off of the north coast of uh, Russia. Yeah, okay. That's where they took a bunch of them. 
All right, Doc, I appreciate it. God's blessings to you. Thanks for your call. You know, I can't imagine George and Larry, and I'll go back to what I said just a minute ago, the the thought process that would go through someone. Uh, we've had many POWs that have become famous POWs, like John McCain and many others. But the thought process that goes on in your mind of being held captive by an enemy that doesn't really care if you live or die, and then their thought process about, Is anybody at home really trying to get me back home? That's got to be really something that is a lot of wear and tear on a person's mind. It is. I I think the the physical torture you can handle. It's the mental that uh, is devastating. Uh, To be somewhere, you know, there's been times that you might have been away from your family and thought, geez, how come I don't hear from, you know, loneliness will kill you, and nobody cares. Larry, is this why you folks started the POW MIA ceremony, is to give tribute and show our patriotism for those that uh, are or were POWs and MIAs? Yeah, this is one of the things on that that, you know, we want to make sure that people don't forget about that. But, you know, when I was off the coast of Vietnam, uh, they took two of our pilots as prisoners, and I, to this day, I don't know about them. Oh, my goodness. And there was no follow-up as to what happened to them in any regard? Uh, no. Uh, you know, I haven't found their names on the wall, so oh. I don't know if, you know, they got them back and they're alive or what they are. But uh, And overall, I think the years that that ship spent over there, they lost 10 or 12 pilots as POW. I'm going to say this, George, and again, you can correct me if you don't agree with me. You do on other subjects. But I think it should be almost mandatory for parents and or schools to attend the ceremony on Saturday because I don't think our kids have an appreciation at all for what took place. Vietnam, Korea, World War II, it doesn't make any difference. They don't understand the hardships. I agree, Zeb. They're not taught. We also need to teach the parents, the teachers, and the public to teach our young uh my grandson is into this 110%. He understands what it's about. And uh, he touches a lot of people on the subject. He does a lot of speaking on it. And he spreads the word. So that's uh, what we need to do. That's what we're out there for today, or next Saturday, is to spread the word, not just for that day, but year long. It, it's not just the school kids. I don't want to just uh, act like I'm denigrating elementary, high school. I'm going right up to the young millennials today. They haven't got a clue as to what kind of a country they're living in, the sacrifices that were provided for them. They should be standing in that city park Saturday also. I agree, Zeb. I was up here a year ago, I think, speaking on this, and I stopped this little store over here next to you and had my POW shirt on that uh, little clerk, and I said, how come you got a POW shirt? says, there's no POWs. And I said, we've got 87,000 of them, and she started crying. She didn't know. That's the whole problem. People do not know. They haven't been informed. I don't give a rip about any education area, whether it's Declo, whether it's Twin, whether it's uh, Haley. It doesn't make any difference. I don't think they're teaching the responsibility necessary for our students to grow up in a world that has provided a lot of sacrifices for them. I agree. And, you know, our government represses this because uh, that doesn't look very good having 87,000 POWs and MIAs. Uh, 80, I, I can't even fathom. i got to stop right there. 87,000. I mean, that is almost, uh, what, the population of Boise? I mean, uh, Boise's over 100, but I mean 87,000? Yes, that's just the people. But then you connect the people that's associated with that 87,000. We go into the millions. A people that's affected oh, by this. My Lord. Larry, this is devastating. I mean, uh, are you folks with the Rupert Veterans Memorial, are you the only kind of show in town, if you will, in the state that's doing an honoring of our POW MIAs? I, I think, you know, there's a lot of other places now that's really starting to get into this. I know the Boise is working on it and, and that. And so they are, it is starting to come back, but you know it took a lot of years and it's taken a lot of work when george and i first got involved in this nine years ago that it wasn't hardly anything i can remember uh, selling pow flags back in 2005 and you could not get people to buy them you know it it, why okay wait a minute why why the easy easy question to ask why wouldn't they buy them don't they believe in it don't they think it really happened why 
they just didn't think it was important, I guess, that, uh, you know, and didn't seem to care. And uh, so th this is a good thing that, uh, especially with the city of Rupert, because they really climbed on board with this deal and have been a big help to us to get this out now. But it, it's taken a long time, and it's finally starting to work its way through, I think. But it took a lot of years. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do a weather forecast, and then I want you to step-by-step step tell everybody what is going to happen with the program starting at 2 o'clock over in the city park, okay? Alrighty. Now, just hang on a second. Don't say another word, which is tough for you, George. I'm going to go ahead and have the weather. The weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Number to call, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time from your hometown meat cutter, Scarrow's Meats. Here's Gina with the weather. Alrighty, here is a look at your weather forecast for this Thursday, September 8th. It's going to be nice, but it is going to be windy. Sunny skies is what we're expecting. High of 73 tonight, low of 43. Winds out of the west right around 18 miles an hour. Tomorrow, winds are going to be dying down. Sunny skies, high of 70 with an overnight low of 38. Saturday, looks like sunny skies, high close to 80. Overnight low of 46, but for Sunday, Winds are going to be picking up again out of the west right around 20 miles an hour, but it's going to be mostly sunny skies, high of 80 as well. That is your weather forecast for Zebit Rain. Thank you, Gina, and it's brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Don Scarrow and the rest of the crew, really good people at 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. Oh, the meat is delicious. Oh, my, I love their brats. Changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. All right, let's go right through everything in the remaining 10 minutes on the program right now you're going to have music in the city park on saturday starting at 10 o'clock in the morning go both of you help me on that yeah we've got music from 10 to 1 30 talk right into the mic george uh music from 10 to 1 30 we've got uh, great food we've got okay. vendors we're going to have a uh, car great show. food what are you going to buy me for lunch hot dogs hamburgers chips water that's all sounding good the uh i talked to jr strunk he's uh there's not going to be no race, so we're going to have a lot of race cars in here, dragsters and oh, really? uh, plastic cars. R right yes. around the city park? Yes, well, the whole inside lane around that square is blocked off for this. Uh, Where am event. I going to park? Out on the highway or what? No, we we got one for you. Okay, I bet you've got one for me. <laughs> I'm worried about that. All right, then then uh, that's going to take place all the way from 10 o'clock until one thirty. Yes. At 1 o'clock, uh, the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association will be escorting the POW family At into the square. one. They'll leave, uh, let's ride at 1 and bring the family, and they'll be in there, oh, probably about one fifteen. Okay, stop right there. Now, you and I had J.R. Strunk, or is that his name? I forgot. Yes. Okay, on the air. He guaranteed me they're going to make a lot of shake, rattle, and roll with those big Harleys. Is that going to happen? That will happen. You take J.R. at his word. All right, I guarantee you, I want to see the glass in every office around the square just like this. I want to see it bubbling. That would be great. Okay, they're going to lead the procession into town. Yes, they will bring the family in. The family will peel off and park. Then they will park their bikes. At 2 o'clock, we start our program. You're getting away from the mic there, George. At 2 o'clock, we start the program. Okay. Um, we've got George Truly, Mr. Bell for our um, MC. Which You're calling me Mr. all of a sudden. Well, I need you for till Saturday okay. anyway. <laughs> Okay, I like but, that. <laughs> but you do a great job, Zeb, and uh, without you and your support, we would not be where we are today. With well, I appreciate that. But now uh, we'll open this thing up at 2 o'clock, and then who are some of the featured people that are going to be there? We've got uh, Ken Morton, Adam Fowler will do the POW table ceremony. And I want to interrupt you right there and say both, Larry, I don't have to tell you guys, but oh... That's one of the most emotional activities that I have ever witnessed. And for nothing else, please be there for that. Yeah, it's uh, very moving. And, Zeb, uh, on the question about uh, are we the only one to do it, as far as I know of, the Rupert POW is the only POW program in the United States that honors individuals. The only one? That I know of, yes. Wow. Uh, most of them, that they do fundraisers for the uh, families back east and for the POW family. Wow. But they do mo uh, more motorcycle events and this really? type of stuff, raising money. Wow. We, we're not out to raise money. We're out to pay tribute to the POWs. Okay. So then it starts, it kicks off, and uh, Ken Mort's going to be there, Adam Fowler. Who else? Uh 
Tegan Nebaker is coming from Salt Lake to sing the national she anthem. She does a wonderful job. She does. She right. is. Uh, and I, I got to make a comment on her. She said that she never what didn't know what P.O.W. was until I got her to sing. Well, she's she's committed now. She's it, It's touched her heart. Oh, my goodness. Okay, go ahead. i got about a couple of minutes left here. Okay, we got Kelly Anthony as a speaker. He was on my program this morning, by the way. I know, and he's... Good yeah. person. Oh, you're listening. Yes. Good for you. Um, we got Dan Hendricks. And oh, I uh, kind of repetitious on this, but that song "Home." Uh, I knew it. He I kill, knew it. He kills it, and it's very appropriate. It is absolutely phenomenal. Dan Hendricks, a very good friend of mine, and he is an excellent singer. Yep. And Youth for Liberty, we be posting colors along with. We'll have the. Uh, 151st uh, Girl Scout troops will also be there. We'll have about 13, 14 of them. Okay, great. Um, we'll have many casual veterans doing the uh, rifle salute. Okay. Um, That's at the end. The 21, uh, 21 gun salute, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, we got, uh, we'll be doing a presentation. With Kelly Anthony and I. I can't hear you, George. We'll be doing a presentation okay. with Kelly You keep Anthony. turning your head away from the mic, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. Larry, reach over and slap him when he does that. <laughs> I'm going to if he don't straighten up. My wife told me I couldn't afford any more hits to the head. <laughs> I don't know what she meant by She's it. right. She's right. Okay. But it's going to be a, a, a solemn event. Uh, and I must say, this will be my last year at the helm with the POW. Now, why is that... Uh, You're too young to quit. I'm, I've had nine years, Zeb, and it's time for me to step out. Uh, Larry caught him, and the VFW is taking it over. And but are you still going to be an integral part of helping? Oh, I'll be there cracking the whip if they don't do what I think you okay, ought to do. But, well, George, but anyway, they're going to do an awesome job. Well, uh, you know, Larry, now's your time to jump in and say something if you want to. Uh, well, yeah, I uh, I think George kind of twisted my arm to make sure I stayed in this. But, you know, I've... I've been in it from day one with him, and I plan on remaining in it. And I told him that, you know, I've got a, enough now to be sure and able to guide these guys wherever they need to guide it to make sure everything goes, that this does not go away. It can't. No, it can't. It can't. And, and I'll tell you what, if it. you want me involved in it, it better not. I'm, I'm serious yeah. because uh, I, I've really enjoyed and hold a warm spot in my heart for what you folks have done over there. But, you know, there's one thing I want to talk to you about. This is a free event. And last year, and I'm going to be very blunt, I looked out from that gazebo and I saw maybe 200 people there. There should be thousands there. There should be. Uh, it dropping back to patriotism. Um, uh, uh, just like Kelly Anson mentioned, you know, we we got a generation we didn't teach uh, flag education to patriotism, and that's what it falls to. Uh, I got mixed emotions. The ones that are there. It means something to them. And if we got to drag them in, then uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, but Larry, wouldn't you say that they've got every ample opportunity? We're not talking about a three, four-hour deal. We're talking about maybe something that's going to last 45 minutes, maybe an hour on the outside. Can't they give up one little segment of that day to come down and show respect for the POW MIAs? They could. I think one of the things they fell down on last year was advertising it. I, I mean, you know, George has been pushing this for a long time. You've been pushing it and that for a long time now to keep it out in front of people and let them know it's going to happen. So, And that's what we need to do is let people know it's going to be there, that they can take that 45 minutes, hour, whatever it takes to come up here. One of the things George did not mention on this program is they do have a car show coming up. He said that he talked to a lot of the race car drivers, and they are coming in. So, you know, it, it, there will be a lot of entertainment besides just the Absolutely. program that goes on, and that Absolutely. should be able to bring people in. One real quick thing, George, before I get off uh, to a commercial. At the end, uh, what about after the 21-gun salute? Are my boys on the Harleys going to take this or not? Yes, they will be playing the taps, and then the Harley boys are going to. Crank her up. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, that just makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Boy, it is. Tell you. And, and, you know, listen, uh, looking at those writers uh, just puts a chill down your spine because they're patriotic. They do what they uh, and They're very boisterous about oh, it with their machines. Wow. I told JR when he was on the program, there's nothing I look forward to more than hearing that. Blah, 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 blah. 
didn't. And that's a poor imitation of what they're going to hear. It is, yeah. And uh, uh, Rupert uh, Police Department, we've got to take hats off to them, the city employees, for stepping up and... Uh, they make our job easy. Absolutely. I'm going to be back with final remarks in just a moment. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Center's great big fall tire sale going on right now. Holy buckets, you don't want to miss this. They've got a lot of their great famous tires on sale. All the different tread designs, all the different cars and trucks and SUVs, they've got the tires for you. And don't forget, too, they've got the best in brake service. My goodness sakes, premium quality parts, best brake industries warranty in the industry. They're ready to serve you at all seven locations. Stop in today and say hello to Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. They are the best. You better believe it. Stop in our major sponsor right here on Zebit Ranch, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Larry, final remarks. Well, I just hope that everybody can take the time to come do this because it really doesn't take that much out of your life. And this is a way for us to remember these people. And, uh, George, you and I have worked together on this for a long time. And uh, your final thoughts about getting and encouraging people to be there on Saturday afternoon. Well, I guess it put it very simply, if you take time out of your life to come and tend this, I'll guarantee you'll walk away with a whole different outlook on on, uh, our patriotism and our military and veterans. I agree. And I wish you both uh, God's blessings on this event. And this event is sponsored by the City of Rupert, VFW, and the Rupert Veterans Memorial Incorporated, right? It is. It's a community uh, event. Uh, A few gets in there and gets a sponsor, but it takes everybody to make it work. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, and that's Larry Cottom, and of course, my old, but emphasis on the old, George Mass. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you, Zeb, and thank you very much for your support. Oh, God bless you both. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up and put it back in the box for another week. And we're going to be back in the saddle again next Monday at 8.06, right here on Zeb at the Ranch, K-Bar, 1230 a.m., and streaming all over the United States, and for that matter, the world, on ZebBell.com. And we thank you one and all for being a part of our program this morning. Next week, we've got some really, really good guests that are going to be coming on to talking about politics, talking about the economy. We've got a lot of things to discuss before that election coming up on November 8th. Tune in next Monday at 8.06, Zebeth Ranch, and remember the way things were are the way things ought to be. God bless. We'll see you Monday.